Crispy Crunchy Chicken. Look for it at your favorite convenience store. Louisiana pests can be a formidable opponent, but J&J Exterminating is ready to tackle them on their own turf. J&J Southeastern Conference Championships. The Smash by Mars in the pit. 18 trips to Omaha in the College World Series. Series. Run out and get the eye through the left. Way back there. Way back there. Six national titles. This is LSU. Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tiger fans, this season Cajun Country Rice is giving Tiger fans the chance to honor their favorite home chef and crown them as an all-star MVP each month. The winner will be announced during LSU baseball games and will receive the title of all-star MVP along with the prize basket from Cajun Country Rice. Visit CajunCountryRice.com backslash LSU Tigers to submit the name of your favorite amateur chef and they could be a winner. ACI Facility Court provides facility maintenance and construction services for hundreds of clients in Louisiana. Visit ACI Facility Support today to find out why they are the preferred choice. All right, A.J. Labus has got the baseball. Warm-up tosses are done. It is time to strap in for game three between LSU and Mississippi State. Buzz, there's 30 SEC games. They all count for one. You've lost the first two, but you got to go get one today. Well, it's an important game because if you can find a way to sweep. You lost this series, but if you can find a way to win this game and then sweep a series throughout the, the SEC schedule, then it, it's like you didn't lose this series, right? So um, they're all important, and this is an important one here. LSU's just got to figure out a way. The pitching's been fine, I think. The starting pitcher, for, sh for sure. They just got to figure out a way to drive runs across and when they get the early chances. We are underway. A.J. Labus' first pitch to Scotty DeBrule is chopped to third base. The throw over is high. Morgan makes the catch and comes back down on the bag. That will be the first out of the game. A.J. Labus off to a good start. One pitch, one out for the Tigers. Yeah, DeBrule. Aggressive early in the count. AJ Labus throws a lot of first pitch strikes. They know that and just beats one into the ground. We saw last night Marceau got a lot of ground balls, a lot of balls chopped into the ground. And so we start the first bat at bat just like that. Now digging in Rowdy Jordan from Mississippi State. Takes a fastball, just misses away. And it's 1 0 to the Mississippi State center fielder. Jordan one for four, drove in a run last night. Hey, he was one for four in both games, Friday night game and last night's game. 1-0 pitch, fastball missed inside. Sent Jordan twisting away from it. 2-0. That fastball right there at 89 miles an hour, and that's what you're going to see from Labus. He'll, he'll gust some 91s and 2s at times, but he's going to pitch from, you know, 88 to 90 miles an hour. 2-0 pitch, ground ball, foul, past first base. It's 2-1. and one. Hey, Buzz, he's not a great velocity guy. He's not going to get you up to 94-95, but the changeup is so good that that fastball is going to play a little bit harder than what it looks like on the radar. Yeah, it's about what we saw Christian McLeod from Mississippi State on Friday, not throw but 89. Every now and then he'd hit a 90 miles an hour, and he, heck, McLeod struck out nine guys in his outing. So, yeah, you don't have to throw 95-96 to be effective. The 2-1 popped up left side of the infield. Back is Thompson. He's calling for it. Drifting into the outfield. He squeezes it. And that's the second out of the first inning. Yeah, really, you heard Coach Paul Maneri in the, in the pregame talk about, look, Mississippi State's not really lighting up LSU's pitching either, just like LSU's not hitting very well against Mississippi State. But what Mississippi State did that LSU didn't do in the, in the first couple of games was when they got a runner in scoring position, they were able to drive him in, not, not even from a hit. A lot of times it was a sack fly or touch the baseball. LSU's going to have to do that when they get on the offensive side of things. First pitch to Tanner Allen is swung on and missed. Change up, missed by the Mississippi State right fielder. Allen hitting 297 on the season. Had a hit last night. Hits from the left side. Labus winds and fires. 
just missed on the inside corner, one and oh, one and one. Yeah, Allen two for nine on the weekend. Tigers will play Allen straight away. The one one pitch hit him right in the back. And Allen will toss the bat, take off all the armor he's wearing, and trot on down to first base. He's the first base runner of the game. Yeah, that ball right there, 90 mile an hour, just hit him right on the upper back side. And those don't hurt as bad, when, but it's changed a lot. I mean, I know back in the day they used to wear a little bit of armor. I remember Brad Cressy wearing some stuff on his elbow, but. Man, nowadays you you those guys don't get out the way because they've got all kind of protection on, and it seems like the hit by pitches are just up over the last few years. Cameron James digs in. He's the third baseman, freshman hitting 282 on the young season. Allen leads from first. Labus stretches and fires. Breaking ball split the plate. 0 and 1. Tanner Allen is five for five on the year in stolen bases. Mississippi State is leading the SEC in. Stolen bases. We got Hayden Travinsky behind the plate. Not as good of a catch and throw guy as Alex Malazzo, but Travinsky still has a very good arm back there. We'll see if Coach Chris Limonis doesn't try to put a little pressure on LSU early. LSU really plays James to pull on the left side of the infield. The 0 1 pitch from Labus swung on a fouled back. It's 0 2. A nice job right there getting ahead early. That was a little, maybe looked like the changeup just. Falling off the table in on James's hands there. So in two, the count to the right handed hitting James. Allen leads from first. He was hit by a pitch. With two outs here in the Bulldog first. Throw over to first base. Not in time. Not Labus' best move. Just checking on Allen over there. Cameron James was one for four in the Friday night game. I think you said it, Hunt. He was one for four in yesterday's game as well. Labus has what he wants. Comes set. The 0 2 pitch. Fouled back. We'll do it again. This baseball season, platter up at Acme Oyster House. Authentic New Orleans seafood with a serious side of fun. Acme Oyster House, where baseball's more fun with seafood. Yeah, you know, you look at this Mississippi State lineup, and we talked about coming into today, they're hitting 274 as a team. They don't have to score a ton of runs with the pitching staff they have, but they're, they battle at the plate. You know, they, they don't get a ton of hits. They didn't have a ton of hits yesterday. They only had four. But they just battle you. Labus checks Allen again, throws a little bit low and not in time. They did have 11 hits on Friday night, but again, just four hits yesterday. But they're a very, they're a veteran laden lineup you've got Allen you've got Hatcher all those guys been playing for a while Davis throws over to first again not in time Rowdy Jordan previous hitter so got guys on the team that have seen a lot of pitch and Scotty De Bruyne has he transferred in from Jacksonville talking to Ben McDonald yesterday he said De Bruyne is the most experienced hitter in college baseball he's seen he's had more at bats than anybody in the country there two pitch the runner goes Travinsky's going to throw down it's a ball of short hops and gets away from Cranford at second that's a stolen base for Allen yeah wasn't even that great of a jump although Allen steals the sixth base of the year but that's just the difference again it's not a knock on Travinsky just it's just a compliment to Malazzo how good he is back there you just see Malazzo continually throw those guys out he had two he had two guys yesterday that he threw out on the base pass the pulmonary is looking for some offense. Got to have some pop, and Travinsky gives you some of that. You definitely see that. You see they put Drost in the lineup. They've got Cruz in the three-hole now. So, Coach definitely trying to shake it up a little bit and see if he can't get some runs for the Tigers today. One-two pitch to James. Front, that's in the center field for a base hit. Here comes Allen around third. Giacomo is going to pick it up and fire it in. That would be way late, cut off by Morgan. And diving back into first base is Cameron James. And Mississippi State's taking a one-nothing lead. Yeah, the margin for error, like we talk about, it's a long game, so you don't want to panic, but the margin for error is just so fine. He, Labus looks like he's cruising. He hits Allen. Allen gets on, steals a base, you know, two strikes. James just puts a good swing on the ball up the middle, and I, 
Mississippi State up 1-0 when it seems like LSU is going to cruise through the top of the first. All three runs that scored yesterday for Mississippi State reached via walk. That one via hit by pitch. Can't give teams bases. Mississippi State's not a potent offensive club, but you give them enough base runners, they'll make you pay. Well, they certainly take advantage of their opportunities. Fastball misses to Luke Hancock, the catcher, and it's 1-0. Yeah, 89-mile-an-hour heater right there from Labus. But, yeah, I mean, look, you play any college team and you give them enough opportunities, they'll make you pay. You, you play a, a polished Mississippi State team with so many veterans in the lineup, you're right, Hunt. They're going to they're gonna definitely make you pay for it. The 1-0 -oh. in there for a strike. It's 1-1. One one. And our good buddy Doug Thompson, who's from Biloxi, Mississippi, he didn't know that there was such a place. It's not that many places in Mississippi, but we figured out that Houston, there is a Houston, Mississippi. 2-1. Just missed inside. It's 3-1. Hancock kind of looked back like he thought that may have hit it. Yeah, that, was, that was awkward because obviously it wasn't ball four, and it didn't look like it hit him from up here, but... Unless it grazed the baggy jersey, maybe. The we'll all-black we'll, we'll, jersey. We'll talk about that a little <laughs> bit later. I've got some thoughts. Three and one, the count to Hancock. The runner goes, fouled back into the screen. It's three and two. Yeah, James at first base was off and running there. James is tied for third in the SEC in stolen bases with seven. He was gunned down yesterday, though. He was seven of seven until yesterday. And Alex Malazzo cut him down. He'll be on the move here as Morgan drops behind him, full count with two outs. Labus looking in at Travinsky. He's got what he wants. Comes set. Here comes a payoff pitch to Hancock. Down, it's ball four. First and second for Mississippi State as Hancock trots down to first base. After recording two quick outs, Labus struggling to finish the first here. Yeah, it's a perfect example in this inning of really what Mississippi State has done. And, and a lot of times LSU will cruise through an inning, but even the innings that, that you feel like they're going to get through quickly, two quick outs here in the top of the first, and then they just keep applying pressure on you. And it can be tough. It can be exhausting from a, a defensive standpoint as well. Logan Tanner's the DH. He'll dig in. Tanner's a 300 hitter. The pitch from Labus. Fastball strike, and it's 0-1. Tigers really playing Mississippi State to pull early. Thompson's a few steps to where he would normally be from his right over in the hole, and then second baseman Cranford's basically behind second base. Yeah, big hole where the second baseman would be playing, so anything hit relatively hard, doesn't even have, you know, ground ball, just anything at that second base position. Again, the normal second base position is going to get through to the outfield, but... These guys got the scouting reports. They know where these guys hit it. The 0-1 caught the outside corner, 0-2. We saw Mississippi State on Friday night do that as well to Beloso Hunt. They shifted the whole infield over. It was really the third baseman was, wasn't even playing shortstop. He was almost playing behind second base, and Beloso just laid down a perfect bunt down the third baseline, and then they stopped doing it. The runners lead from first and second, and Blavis will step off. 50% capacity crowd. Looks like we've got just about that at the box here today. Trying to urge Labus on, but batter Tanner calls time. Suck the air out of the balloon a little bit. Yeah, smart play right there by Tanner. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, Hunt. I mean, couldn't ask for more perfect conditions. Let's see if we can get to the 0 2 pitch here. Labus peers into Travinsky, and we will not. <laughs> Stand calls time. A little bit of gamesmanship going on out there. Yeah, not sure if Labus likes what's being called or just trying to figure out what Travinsky's throwing down there. Maybe with the runner at second, they go to, you know, multiple signs. Here comes the 0-2. 
missed away, and it's one and two. It's all right. It's a good 0-2 pitch right there. Looked like that slider off the plate and trying to get Tanner to chase. So I like that pitch 0-2. And still 1-2. Doesn't have to give him anything really good to hit. Change the eye level maybe here. Fastball up or, or bury that curveball again. I feel like this is a big spot here, Buzz, the way the Tigers are swinging the bat this weekend. Don't want to get a crooked number early. Here comes a 1-2 pitch. Ground ball, left side. Doty blocks it up, now picks it up, fires across the diamond in time, and that will retire the side. Mississippi State strikes first. They get a run on a hit and leave a pair. Tigers coming to bat next on the LSU Sports Radio Network. of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers coming to bat. Mississippi State strikes first. It'll be the three freshmen at the top of the order for LSU. Trey Morgan, Brody Drost, and Dylan Cruz against hard-throwing right-hander Eric Sarantola for Mississippi State. Listen up, folks. Looking for some extreme fun? Then play Cash Extreme from the lottery. Went up to $15,000. That's right, $15,000. Visit your favorite lottery retailer and ask for Cash Extreme. For your chance to win, must be at least 21 to purchase. Buzz, a little lineup shake up and be Trey Morgan leading things off for the Tigers. Yeah, and I, I like this by Coach Paul Maneri because Trey Morgan, although he scuffled a little bit hitting the last couple weeks, he did get a hit yesterday off of Bednar, but he, he draws a lot of walks. He gets hit by pitches. That on-base percentage is second on this team behind Dylan Cruz. So I like this in the, in the leadoff spot. First pitch from Sarantola, 93-mile-an-hour fastball misses, and it's 1-0. and Talked about it in the pregame. Sarantola's got a, a good arm. I mean, he's going to come at you with a lot of fastballs. He can get erratic at times, so got to be patient. 1-0 misses away. It's 2-0 to Trey Morgan. Morgan hitting 320 on the year. 24 for 75, scored 22 runs. Here comes a 2-0 pitch. Fastball away, 3-0 to the Tiger leadoff man. This has been the book on Sarantola. Got the big arm, but walks can be a bit of an issue. Here's the 3-0 pitch to Morgan. Caught the outside corner, 3-1. One pitch splits the plate, and it's full. Yeah, his last start against Eastern Michigan went five innings, didn't walk anybody, struck out five. So that'll get you a start. That'll get you the start of the <laughs> opening weekend. The three-two pitch misses away to Morgan, and Tigers have a leadoff base runner. And that's what you. That's I think why you see Morgan in the leadoff spot. Like I said, that's his 12th walk of the season, and he's just always getting on base, even when he's struggling a little bit with the stick. Figuring out a way to get on base, that's what you want your leadoff guy to do. Now, Dross needs to get ready to hit. And again, pick a spot out if Sarantola doesn't come to you. He just showed you that he's a little erratic, so want to be patient here. Dross to DH, hits from the left side. Pitch. Down, 1-0. How about this? Sarantola, he was 
chosen in the 30th round of the 2018 Major League Draft by Tampa Bay. Also drafted in the eighth round of the 2016 Ontario, Ontario Hockey League Draft by the Owen Sound Attack. He's a hockey guy too, coach. There's the one out, caught the outside corner, one and one. So you got you got a pitcher and you got a hockey player up there. The thing is, I wouldn't want to get in a, yeah, don't a, charge them out. a brawl here. Don't charge them out. <laughs> He's a big kid too, 6'5", 225 pounds. One, one pitch to draw, so it's a strike. Took something off that one, it's one and two. Yeah, that was a good off-speed pitch there. And when you're geared up for 92 to 95 mile an hour and you drop an all-speed pitch at 82 for a strike, that's tough to adjust to. Here comes a 1-2. Morgan's on the move. The pitch misses. Throw down's going to be late and offline. It's a stolen back for Trey Morgan. Yeah, good jump by Morgan and a, a good pitch to run on as that ball was kind of down and in. As catcher Hancock just couldn't get the transfer and throw and the footwork all in unison together. An early scoring opportunity presents itself for the Tigers as it did yesterday. Unless she wasn't able to cash in yesterday, we'll see what they can do here. Morgan leads from second. Here's the 2-2 to draw. Didn't miss us and the count's full. Yeah, and that's been the case the last couple nights, even Friday night with McLeod. They had a chance early in the game and they just wasn't able to capitalize. And sometimes all you get is one or two chances. You don't get a whole lot. So when you get them, you've got to take advantage of them. And I know Coach Paul Maneri emphasized that to this team over the last couple days. Here comes a full count pitch to Drost. Misses down, and that's ball four. Tigers open the first with a pair of walks. And that was a 95 mile an hour heater, too, down in the zone, and Drost was able to hold up and not offer at it. So, yeah, Tigers got something cooking here, and this is, again, the book on Sarantola is he's going to give you opportunities, so you just got to be ready to ready to hit. And I like this opportunity here with Cruz in the three hole and a couple of Tigers on the uh, base pass. We're going to get a little talking to to Mr. Sarantola, the pitching coach, out to do a little chatting. We want to remind you not to miss Inside LSU Sports, presented by Academy and Outdoors each week on the LSU Sports Television Network. Inside LSU Sports will air Wednesdays at 10 o'clock on WBTR Channel 19 and at 10.30 on Cox Channel 4 in Baton Rouge. Check your local listings for the LSU Sports Television Network affiliate in your area. Yeah, that's pitching coach Scott Foxhall in his third season with the Mississippi State Bulldogs, just kind of slowing everything down, waiting for home plate umpire to go out there and break things up. Gorgeous day for baseball here on a Sunday in South Louisiana. I want to give a shout out to some guys down in New Orleans, the pod, as they want it to be referred to. They're watching, listening to the game, playing some golf today is, is my understanding. So I wanted to give those guys a tip of the cap. Dylan Cruz will be the hitter, batting in the three-hole, and this is kind of the point of moving him down to the three-hole to get him some at-bats with guys on base, and here we are in the first inning with a pair of guys on the board. Yeah, I mean, Cruz did everything right in the leadoff spot. He was he was number one in the SEC, or is number one in runs scored and on-base percentage, so now he just needs to get the, the runs batted in here in the three-hole. Sarantola comes set. The runners lead from first and second. The pitch. Fastball caught the outside corner at 95 miles an hour. It's 0-1 yeah, That's Cruz. That's a good heater right there, and that's on the outside corner. I like that take, though, by Cruz. Walks the first two guys. You don't get a pitch that you like. So you take it, and now Cruz, such a good hitter. He can hit with two strikes as well, although it's 0-1 you know, now. Big right-hander kicks and fires. Breaking ball caught the plate. It's 0-2. That's a good pitch there. Yep. Nothing you can do there. Two of his best pitches of the early afternoon so far, and he makes him to the best hitter on LSU's team. Crew's going to have to battle now. Digs back in. The count's 0-2. No win to speak of. Flags just hanging on the poles there in center field. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball missed away. It's one and two. They are trying to get Cruz right there to help him help Sarantola out by swinging at it, but he did a nice job of taking that ball. The good overhand curveball, though, and he throws that hard, too. He throws that in the 80 miles an hour range. 
That's hard for an all-speed pitch here in college. So one and two the count to the Tiger Star freshman. Sarantola comes set. Here it comes. Ground ball foul near Nolan Kane, third base coaching box. And we'll do it again. Bunch of guys on this state pitching staff throw the ball mid 90s to upper 90s. We saw Sims come in yesterday. He was throwing the ball 95 miles an hour. Sims hides it a little better than Sarantola. Sarantola's kind of real long and gets that arm back there, and you can see it a long way. So maybe not, still not easy to hit, but maybe a little he easier to pick up from Sarantola. Runners lead from first and second to one, two. Line drive down the line and right field. Will it stay fair? It will not. Down into the corner, it's a foul ball. Yes, yeah, Antola jump. Got a little extra on that one at 97 miles an hour, and Cruz able to get the bad hit to it, just not able to quite keep it fair down the right field line. How many 97 mile an hour fastballs has Dylan Cruz ever seen? I mean, surely a couple in the fall, maybe if he saw Jaden Hill. But or maybe Fontenot, but just not very many. This is I think once it gets up come to the, come <laughs> to the SEC. I think it once it gets up to 95, it's 95 to 97 is all the same. But you're right, it, it can't be a whole lot. So one, two, still the count. Morgan an aggressive lead. The inside move will chase him back to second base. Great to hear some fan interaction, boys. For the first time in a year and a half. Yeah, this is how the box is, box is supposed to feel. One two pitch from Sarantola. Grounded to second. Picked up by DeBrule. Got a second for one. The turn back to first is not in time. Cruz beat it. We'll have runners at the corners with one out. Yeah, ball was never hit hard enough, especially the way Cruz runs. Although DeBrule did a nice job of catching, making sure the first one to foresight. But look, got to tip your hat right there to Cruz. You're facing a. A power arm, an elite arm, and I know that looks, you know, he didn't get the hit there, but at least he moved the baseball. We saw too many times over the last two days, guys swinging and missing and not moving the baseball, moving runners over, and at least Cruz was able to touch it there and, and, and make something happen with Gavin Dugas now at the plate looking to drive in a run. Tiger left fielder hitting 303. He's got runners at the corners and one out. The pitch all the way to the screen. Coming home is Morgan. He's going to hit the deck, and he's safe. Down to second base goes Cruz, and we've got a tie ball game. That ball was way out of the zone. Looked like an off-speed pitch that just he never got on top of, just popped way up out of the hand. And at this point, LSU will take him any way they can get him. That is exactly right. <laughs> that equals LSU's output from the first two games combined. One run, and we've got a new ball game here. Mississippi State does have action in the their bullpen. So one to know the count to Dugas as Cruz leads from second base. The 1-0 pitch is in the dirt, blocked up. Cruz going to try to get to third. The throw down is not in time. Looked like the throw may have beaten him, but the tag from James may not have gotten to Cruz. Heads up base run in there. With one out, you're trying to get to third base, and Cruz saw that ball in the dirt and hustled for third base. A little bit of a hook slide there from Cruz. He avoided the tag and got into third base beautifully. Yeah, nice job of, of tucking the left arm back and really reaching with his right hand where it made it difficult for James to get the tag on Cruz. 2-0 to Dugas. The infield will play back. He swings and misses and fouls one back to the screen. It's 2-1. Like the aggressiveness there from Dugas, 2-0. And trying to work early in the count. I was talking to Coach Maneri. He says, with guys at third base and less than two outs, he wants his hitters to work early in the count. Don't get to two strikes and risk striking out. The 2-1. Missed away. It's 3-1. and one. Kate Doty in the on-deck circle. Number 18, Chase Patrick, the right-hander in Mississippi State's bullpen, getting loose. The wind and the 3-1. Ground ball to short. That's going to get the run home. Cruz coming in. It's picked up, thrown over to first in time. It will be the second out, but it will also be the second run as Cruz touches home plate, and LSU's got a 2-1 lead. Yep, that's what you're looking for. That's what they couldn't do in the first couple games. They got a guy at third base. Dugas gets to an advantage count. 
Gets a fastball up and out over the plate and doesn't try to do too much. Just tries to play a little pepper and hits it to the shortstop to draw the second run of the game in. So now Doty will hit with two out and nobody on. They'll shift him, all three infielders outside of first base on the left side. The first baseman playing between first and second. First pitch is a breaking ball that caught the outside corner. It's 0-1. You think these college coaches got information on these hitters? I mean, you see infielders shifting dr drastically. 0-1's fouled out of play. Back over the first base dugout. It's 0-2. And, and again, we saw this a lot from Mississippi State. I mentioned already we saw it with Peloso. We've seen it with Doty. Uh, I believe Thompson. They do it a lot with Thompson when he comes up. So they know, they know the spray chart for the opposing hitters. Here comes the 0-2 from Sarantola. Breaking ball called, strike three, and that'll do it. Tigers push a pair across without the benefit of a hit. It's a 2-1 ball game after one here at the box. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. This is LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Top two at the box, LSU two, Mississippi State one. A.J. Labus back out for his second inning of work. He will face seven, eight, nine, Hatcher, Skinner, and Forsythe in the Mississippi State order. Yeah, today just feels like it's going to be an offensive day. I mean, of course, the weather's a lot better, but... Already two runs for LSU, a run in the top of the first by Mississippi State. Just the last couple nights with the wind blowing in, it's been a little chilly. Seems like more of pitchers' nights. First pitch to Hatcher is a fastball that misses away. It's 1-0. and Hatcher plays first base. He's a junior hitting 262. Six doubles and a homer. It's a 1-0 pitch from Labus. Change up, popped foul back into the seats down the third base line. Yeah, Hatcher, the junior out of Albany, Georgia. Labus has a new baseball. He's got what he wants. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. Popped up. A mile high. Cranford at second base back into right field. He's staring up into the sun. Got a beat on it. Makes a catch. And that's out number one. I told Doug this a couple nights ago when there was a pop-up, I think maybe Cruz or somebody hit with that wind gusting in from left field. I said, that's one thing I do not miss. I know they make it look easy catching pop-ups, but that is not as easy as everyone, uh, as it looks. Cranford's good out there at second base, no doubt. Left-handed hitter for Mississippi State is Braylon Skinner, left fielder, hitting 444. He takes the ball outside. It's 1-0. Yeah, Skinner was 0 for 3 in yesterday's game, but was the hero of Friday night's game as he went 3 for 3, drove in three runs, had the big two run homer off of Jaden Hill on Friday night. Here comes the 1 0 from Labus. Change up caught the outside corner 1 and 1. Really nice pitch there. Yeah, Labus doing a nice job early of changing speeds. 
and working in and out. And that's that's his bread and butter. I mean, he's got to be able to do that. He's got to be able to change speeds and throw that change up for strikes. Here's the one one just missed away two and one. It's like a little cutter there or something from Labus is that ball just missed off the outside corner. Quickly the two one. Ground ball first base side going to be a tough play. Morgan picks it up. Can he get to the bag in time? He can. Just beats the quick skinner to the bag, and there's two away. Yeah, that almost worked kind of like a a push punt as it was dying quickly, and Skinner was getting down the line, but a nice job by Morgan of catching, making sure he catches the ball first, and then the quick footwork to get to first base before Skinner was able to get there. And with two away, Lane Forsyth, Mississippi State shortstop, hitting 370, will dig in. Labus working from the windup, first pitch. Fastball strike down the middle, it's 0 1. Forsyth, a freshman out of Tennessee, has been doing a nice job really playing a solid shortstop. Drove in the first run of the game yesterday. He awaits Labus' 0 1. Fastball. Called strike and it's 0 2. That's when you know starting pitchers are on their game. Every time you look up at the scoreboard, it's 0 and 2, 1 and 2. 0 2 pitch misses high. Just the fastball up at 90 miles an hour and Forsyth didn't chase it. It's 1 and 2. Yeah, we changed the eye level a little bit there. I like that pitch. 90 miles an hour, get it up in the zone, let Forsyth get a good look at it and then. Maybe try to pull the string here on something down and away. The wine and the pitch fouled away. We'll do it again. Just like this winning lineup, Centos has the all-star services for all your business needs. Everything from uniforms to kitchens and restroom solutions. Get ready for the workday with Centos. One and two the count to Forsyth. Hits from the right side. Here comes a pitch. Fly ball to right field. Cruz going back. Looks like he's got a beat on it. And he makes the catch. Labus retires Mississippi State in order in the second. We go to the bottom half. LSU leads 2-1 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 2-1 Tigers here in the bottom of the second. Big right-hander Eric Sarantolo on the mound for Mississippi State. He will face Travinsky, DiGiacomo, and Thompson here in the Tiger second. And Sarantolo threw 26 pitches in that first inning. Did not give up a hit. The Tigers were able to score two runs. Travinsky doing the catching for LSU today. Batting in the six hole. Awaits the first pitch. Fastball missed away, 1-0. Yeah, Travinsky hitting 368 on the year. He came in for Malazzo on Friday night and went 0 for 2. 
Here comes the 1-0 pitch from the big right-hander. Hammered foul up into the seats. Look out. Yeah, you hope somebody's not going in for some popcorn at that same moment when or the ball's look, traveling. Looking right at their phone. Yeah. Yeah, Travansky 0 for 2 in Friday night's game and then 0 for 1 in a pinch hit effort last night. These are two big dudes doing battle here. The 1-1 pitch. Missed high and away, 2-1. and one. Well, that's power and power in Sarantola with the 95-mile-an-hour fastball against Travinsky with the big leg kick. 2-1 and one the count as Mississippi State shifts against Travinsky. Breaking ball missed away, 3-1. and one. DiGiacomo will hit next. Here comes the 3-1. Ground ball. Second baseman will pick it up playing shortstop. He'll fire it over to first base in time. First out of the inning. Yeah, big shift on right there with 3 1, knowing Travinsky's a power guy and a pool guy. He had everybody but the first baseman on the left side of second base. And you're right, uh, Hunt, that ball was a routine play to the shortstop that the second baseman, DeBrule, was able to make. Here comes the Giacomo. Back in the lineup again after missing some time over the last couple of weeks with a hamstring injury. Gives the Tigers a little bit of speed toward the bottom half of the lineup here as he digs in from the left side. First pitch to Giacomo is a fastball strike, 0 and 1. Mississippi State now with two guys in the bullpen. Just playing a little catch. Not, both of them aren't playing catch. Really, one of them is, but two guys down there. 0-1 pitch hit him. Ouch. 96-mile-an-hour heater right off the front leg of the Giacomo. He'll toss the bat in a little bit of frustration and stroll down to first base. Yeah, that, that does not feel good, I can tell you right now. That ball's not hit off the bat. That is right above the kneecap. Ballmanary will walk out to first base and check on his center fielder. For good reason. These, Sarantola, this a guy like Sarantola, these are guys that really make you uncomfortable in the box because they don't. You know, when they're when they're on, they obviously throw a lot of strikes, but they, when they have a tendency to be wild and throw 96 miles an hour, they just make you very uncomfortable in the box. Tiger fans, show off your Tiger spirit. Visit cox.com backslash Tigers to take a selfie with Mike the Tiger. And don't forget to share. Watch together, cheer together, take a selfie together. Even if you're not actually together, Cox bringing us closer. Looks like the Giacomo's okay, but that's going to end the day for Mr. Sarantola. Chris Limonis grabs the baseball, and he'll call down to the bullpen. We'll tell you about the reliever that's coming in next after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana, telling us.
us about Chase Patrick, Buzzy. Yeah, Chase Patrick, Patrick making his fifth appearance of the year. He has a zero ERA and three and a third innings pitched. Giving up one hit, no runs, no walks, and struck out two. Does not have a bunch of innings pitched, but the fastball is not explosive. It's only going to be, a, you know, 87, 89 miles an hour, but it's a lot of all speed. To righties, you're going to see fastball sliders. To lefties, you're going to see a lot of change-ups, but mostly all speed pitches. So you got to see the ball up and look for the slider and change-up, depending which side of the plate you're hitting from. First to greet Mr. Patrick will be the Tiger shortstop Jordan Thompson hitting 250 on the year. The Giacomo appears to be okay after being hit by a pitch by Sarantola. He'll lead from first, and Thompson will dig in with one away. First pitch from Patrick. Just missed. It's 1-0. 88 miles an hour on that heater, so a little bit of change in velo here. Call your Cranford on deck. He will be next for the Tigers. Here comes the 1 0. Giacomo's on the move, swung on foul into the screen. Giacomo will retreat to first base, and the count will be 1 and 1. Yeah, Pulmonary putting a hit and run on there. I guess he must have liked what the Giacomo told him as he's still in the game, and the knee must be feeling all right after taking that 96 mile an hour fastball to it. But which Pulmonary loves, you know, loves to play the hit and run and loves to put the pressure on, especially with an early lead right now. And Thompson was ahead in the count. Well, the scout report was a lot of all speed pitches. The first two pitches there here to Thompson have been fastballs. Here comes the 1 1. That's not a fastball, and it didn't cross the plate either. 2 and 1. Yeah, that, that was kind of that frisbeed up there a little bit. He, Patrick is a sidearm guy, more three quarters to even sidearm, if you will. And that, when he throws that slider, it really dives across the plate from a right handed hitter. 2 and 1 the count. Giacomo leads from first. Thompson with the open stance. Awaits the 2 1 pitch. Here it is. Chopped foul. 2 and 2. Yeah, with that side on, when, when, when the fastball's thrown in there, it's going to kind of dive down in the zone. So, another thing on the scouting report was that when, he, when Patrick is throwing well, he's obviously throwing a lot of strikes, but he's getting a lot of ground balls. And with two strikes, now Mississippi State will go back to the shift here and vacate the entire right side as they hold to Giacomo and three infielders will be on the left side. Snap throw to first. Giacomo kind of leaning there, but the throw is not in time. Yeah, leaning a little bit and almost like he couldn't get his feet out of the quicksand right there. <laughs> See if Thompson can battle here. Young Tiger freshman. Patrick comes set, fires over to first. It's not in time. EFCU Financial is the number one rated credit union for member value in the state of Louisiana. Experience it for yourself by visiting any location or efcufinancial.org. 2-1 Tigers here in the top, bottom of the second inning. Game three of a three-game set. Here comes a 2-2 pitch. Line to short, caught. I don't know what the Giacomo is doing. He's going to be doubled off. Easily, and that will retire the side. Tigers don't score. We played two. It's 2 1 LSU at the box, and this is the LSU Sports Radio Network. As a baby, Allie visited St. Francis Pediatric from Monroe, unable to call the last part of Dr. Wilson's sister, pediatric neurologist, confirmed her diagnosis by spinal muscular atrophy of St. Francis Pediatric. The FDA approved a very sporadic medication to treat this condition. Allie Mae was our sporadic patient in Louisiana with SMA to receive this medication, and if any day she was receiving it, she was able to pull herself up.
Your Fighting Tigers play here. The home for Fighting Tiger Baseball. The LSU Sports Radio Network. Top of the Mississippi State order coming to bat. It'll be Scotty DeBrule, Rowdy Jordan, and Tanner Allen in the third inning against Tiger Sunday starter A.J. Labus. Tigers have a 2-1 lead today, trying to salvage game three of a three-game SEC set. Mississippi State, of course, won the first two behind some really strong pitching in this series. 6-1 the final on Friday night, and last night a 3 to nothing Mississippi State decision. But a big game here for LSU to try to win one today, Buzz. Well, and I was talking to some people before the game and they were asking please tell me this is going to be the best pitching staff we face all year I said well I said I think from one to eight one to ten you know for pitchers wise so their number one guy to their number tenth guy I said I think it may be the best I said but we're going to face better you know starting pitchers from Vanderbilt and there's the folks from Nashville come on yeah. down here take a look at this. yeah there's going to be some guys just as good if not better but one to ten throughout the pitching staff might not be anybody better in the SEC or the country it's a league low ho ho it with arms obviously those paying attention yesterday know that Jack Leiter from Vanderbilt threw a no-hitter yesterday against South Carolina. He's their number two guy, and his 124th pitch of the day was 97 miles an hour. Struck out 16. First pitch from A.J. Levis is a strike to Scotty DeBrule. It's 0-1. State leadoff man 0 for 10 on the weekend. Hits from the left side. Levis winds and fires. In there for a strike, it's 0-2. Yeah, well, let's keep it that way, Hunt. Let's keep it 0 for maybe 0 for 11 here. Would you prefer that I not have used that stat there? Uh, you got to say it. People say that all the time. Oh, you jinxed him. Well, I mean, you got to say it. You got to say the stats. Comes the 0-2 from Levis High, and it's 1-2. and two. The rule at 235 on the young season, driven in 10 runs. Got 16 hits, four of them for extra bases. He fouls one over by the dugout, and it's 0-2. Scotty DeBrule out of Venice, Florida. Thought maybe Venice, Louisiana, didn't you? Fishing capital of the world, but Venice, Florida. Levis winds and fires the 1-2. Ground ball off the glove of Morgan into right field for a base hit. DeBrule's going to go for second base. Cruz picks it up, fires it in. It's not picked clean by Thompson. And DeBrule will be in the second base. We'll see how they score it, but he's at second base one way or the other. I think it's a double, right, Hunt? I mean, nothing, there was no error. There was just a hustle play by DeBrule. The ball was hit off of Morgan's glove, but Morgan did have to dive for it. And it just took forever to get to Cruz because Cruz was playing so deep. And with Cruz's arm, he made a good, strong throw. Just Thompson wasn't able to pick it out of the dirt. And you got to tip your hat to DeBrule there for just a good hustle play. Yeah, that's a veteran play there. So State's got the tying run out at second base, and that'll bring up Rowdy Jordan, center fielder. Switch hitter, hit from the left side against Labus. Levis will work from the stretch, looks in at Travinsky, checks the runner at second and fires. Ground ball to first. It'll be easy play for Morgan as he will step on the bag to retire Jordan, but over to third base goes DeBrule, and he's 90 feet from tying this game. And that's a perfect example of when I talk about this Mississippi State lineup, how the, the numbers may not jump out at you as far as being some great productive lineup, but do they just do the little things right whenever uh, they get a guy at second base with nobody out. R Rowdy Jordan's up there. He's a left-handed hitter. He's not trying to hit the ball the other way. He's trying to get around a baseball and hit it on the ground to the right side. And now you've got a runner at third base with less than two outs. You know, now Labus has really got a pitch in the clutch. Tanner Allen digs in. Three-hole hitter for Mississippi State. Bats from the left side. LSU will play the infield back. They will concede the tying run as Labus works from the windup. Pitch. Fly ball to left field. Hit pretty well. Going back to the track is Dugas. He makes the catch, banging up against the wall. The runner will tag and come in to score, but a sensational catch by Gavin Dugas for the second out of the inning. Well, that's what you call good baseball all the way around. You look at Allen, and he works early in the count against Levis and lifts the ball out to left field. Dang near gets out of the ballpark, but Dugas just on his horse and you could tell the whole time he had on his mind, I'm catching this baseball. I don't care if I go through the wall. And he almost did right there as 
the window whirl sign. Almost needed to get a new one as Dugas went up against it very hard, but was able to snatch it. There's a Gavin Dugas body imprint on the window <laughs> out there. That was great concentration. The ball hit his glove as he hit the wall. That's a very difficult play and a great play. Mississippi State does score the tying run. It's two at two here at the box. First pitch into Cameron James misses and it's 1 and 0. Well, as an outfitter too, you know as you're running full speed and you get to the warning track, you feel the different texture on your feet. You feel that dirt. You know the wall is lurking. The 1 0 pitch swung on and missed. It's 1 and 1. And it can be very easy as you start to feel that uh, warning track to you know get a little gun shy or get a little alligator arm to not want to go up and make that catch. But again, Dugas risking his body and makes the catch. Here comes the 1 1 from Levis. Just missed the outside corner, two and one. The two one pitch from Labus caught the outside corner, two and two. Skip Bertman Field sun splash today on a gorgeous Sunday here in spring. Tigers and Bulldogs tied at two as we play the top of the third inning. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Labus kicks and fires. Line drive left center field. Nobody's going to get that one. It's going to go all the way to the wall. James rounds first, heads into second base. He'll pull up right there. He's got a two out double. Yeah, that ball right there by James was just tattooed into the left center gap. And Nothing you can do there. Just tip your hat to a good piece of hitting by James. So that'll bring up Luke Hancock, Bulldog catcher. Hancock walked back in the Mississippi State first. James leads from second base. He represents the go-ahead run here as we play the top of the third inning. Labus works from the stretch, checks the runner. Rocks and fires. Grounded foul, 0-1. Yeah, I know you gave a shout-out to some of your golf buddies, uh, Hunt. I want to—I forgot to do this yesterday. It was such a long day, but give a happy belated birthday to my seven-year-old as of yesterday, Mary Ellis Heidel. And, of course, I can't say her name without saying her younger sister's name. So hope <laughs> Caroline Heidel is watching as well. Caroline and Mary Ellis, love y'all. Way to check your boxes, Dad. Yeah, absolutely. The 0-1 just missed, 1-1. One and one. Wind starting to kind of gust out to right center. Again, it just feels like an offensive day. You just feel like before the game even started that it wasn't going to be a 3-0 ball game or a 2-1 a ball game. 1-1 one, one pitch. Split the plate, 1-2. Eighty nine mile an hour heater there from Labus, but you would think pretty good chance we're going to see a change here. Got to go to your best pitch with the go ahead run out there on second base. Absolutely. And you got Jordan Thompson, the Tiger shortstop shaded over almost behind second base. Not quite. And he's deep on the outfield grass. Hancock stepped out, but now he's ready to roll. Labus holds the ball just to his right side, peers in at Travinsky. He's got what he wants, checks the runner. Here comes a one-two pitch. Change up down, and it's two and two. Yeah, not a bad pitch right there, two-two. I like it down in the zone, just Hancock able to lay off of it. I always said the change up is when, when somebody's got a good one, that's maybe the, one of the toughest pitches to recognize, much less hit, because it's got the same spin as a fastball and the same arm speed for the pitcher. The 2-2, two -two, grounded foul, we will do it again. Yeah, I've always said the straight change is the best pitch in baseball. It's tough to hit, it speeds up the fastball, disrupts timing. Great slider's great to have, but it's a little <laughs> easier to pick up. Well, if you throw one of them really well, that, that that's good, but I, I look back to the Chris Cotton days, I remember how good that changeup was for that young man. And When you have a good one, like you said, Hunt, it's uh, it's hard to hard to hit for sure. Tigers 
fully shifting to the right side here. Three infielders on that side. The pitch sprayed foul. We'll need a new baseball. We'll do the two and two again. Yeah, that pitch there kind of hung out over the plate. Hancock just able to spoil it off and goes without saying, but every run is so critical here on an SEC Sunday. That one sitting at second base in the form of James is a big one here early in this game. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, runner at second. Ground ball going to be a tough play if it stays fair. Going to trickle foul, though, down the third base line. And we will do it again. From one powerful breed to another, your Louisiana BMW centers are proud to be an LSU Tiger partner and congratulate the LSU Tigers on their quest for excellence. BMW, an official Tiger partner of LSU Athletics. Go Tigers. 2-2 Two -two ball game here in the top of the third. Luke Hancock hitting for Mississippi State. A 276 hitter leads the team with five homers on the year. All he's trying to do is shoot one through the left side to bring home the go-ahead run. Looks so easy from up here, doesn't it? If he would just <laughs> hit a normal ground ball to the shortstop, it would do it. But when that ball's traveling in 60 feet, 6 inches away at 90 miles an hour, it's hard to guide the baseball where you want it. Just got to put good swings on it, and that's all hitters can do. But Labus here needs to make a big pitch. Here comes the 2-2. Runners going. Called strike three, and that will retire the side. I believe as the throw got away, the runner's coming in. I've got strike three to end the inning, but everyone's still out there. Yeah. And now they're going to come off the field. I, I thought that was it. I was wondering what was happening. That's strikeout that'll do it, so the run does not score. It's two to two as Labus walks off the mound. We'll come back in the bottom of the third here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. A little bit of confusion there as we ended the top half, but the desired <laughs> result is a strikeout, and that's a, another Tabasco strikeout. Tabasco, the official hot sauce of LSU Athletics. He's also got a pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana, Buzz. Yeah, Jackson Fristo making his fifth appearance of the year. He's 2-0 with a 1.59 ERA and 17 innings pitch, giving up eight hits, three runs, six walks, and 22 strikeouts. And he's another, sounds like a broken record, huh? But he's another good arm. He's going to be 92 to 95 miles an hour. And he's going to be fastball slider. It's going to be a bunch of fastballs. He wants to come right at you with the heat. But again, he's got the good breaking pitch as well. 9-1-2 in the Tiger order. Starts with Collier Cranford as he digs in and takes a fastball high. It's 1-0. Game is an hour old now here on a Sunday at the box. Two to two ties. We play the bottom of the third inning. Presto winds in the 1 0. Missed down. It's 2 0. Yeah, and with Fristo on, I'll give you some final lines. Sarantola, who started the game, went one and a third inning, gave up no hits. He did give up two runs, both of them earned. Two walks and one strikeout. 2 0. Cranford grounded left side into left field for a base hit. He pumps his fist at the dugout trying to fire the boys up and the leadoff runner is on here in the Tiger third. 
Patrick came in after Sarantoli threw two thirds of an inning, gave up no hits, no runs, no walks, and no strikeouts. Yeah, that's a good job right there by Tom, or excuse me, Cranford of getting, a, getting to a favorable hitter's count at 2-0 and then taking a fastball that was up in the zone and being ready for it, geared up for it, and knowing who Cranford is, not trying to do too much, staying on top of it, driving it through the infield. So Trey Morgan will dig in in his debut in the leadoff spot. He walked and scored in the first inning. Cranford leads from first. Morgan digs in from the left side. Here comes the pitch from Fristo. Fastball in there for a strike, and it's 0-1. That was a good 94 mile an hour heater right there down the middle to get ahead of Trey Morgan. It's like Mitchell Sanford, number 22, getting loose in the bullpen. That's obviously not, not, not to pitch, but to maybe go in to the outfield. The Giacomo got hit by a pitch, maybe feeling it a little bit. Morgan grounds back to Fristo. He picks it up. He'll just underhand it to first base. Is down to second scampers Cranford. Morgan is retired, and there's one out in the Tiger third. Yeah, good job right there by Fristo of taking what they give him. That ball was taking him all the way to first base. He didn't try to spin and get the out at second, but just get the out when they're giving it to you. Brody Drost will dig in now. Tiger two-hole hitter. Walked back in the first inning. Was retired on the fielder's choice. Cranford, good speed there at second base. He represents the go-ahead run for the Tigers. Drost DHing today. Where's number 10? Barb High product. Fristo's got what he wants. He checks Cranford at second, looks in, kicks and fires, breaking ball. Missed high and away. It's 1 0. Yeah, the freshman, as you said, Hunt, out of Barb and a lot of good ones out of that program. And draws with power potential. He already has two home runs on the year. I wouldn't mind a visit to the Diamond, diamond Deck right about <laughs> now. 1 0 the count to Drost. Here it comes. Swung on and missed. Good high fastball. Got by that at 94 miles an hour. It's one and one. It's going to be tough to catch up to it up there in the zone at the letters, especially with the velocity that Fristo pitches with. Fristo out of Paducah, Kentucky. 1-1 one, one pitch to Drost. Fastball caught the outside corner, one and two. That was close. Yeah, that was close. I'm going to tell you that uh, we'd want it as a <laughs> – our pitchers are going to want that pitch, but as a hitter, man, you just – that's tough luck because you feel like you can't do anything with it, and it's – I didn't see the last pitch there, but you feel like that was probably at 94 at the knees. Umpire, I always say this, kind of in a no-win situation there. So one and two is the count. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. High heater. Got it by him at 94, and that's the second out of the inning. Yeah, that's that old five ball pitch that all pitching coach talks about. That's that fastball up and in in the zone. And it just looks like from a hitter standpoint that you can catch up to it and you can do a lot of damage with it. You just cannot get the barrel of the bat to the baseball. That'll bring up Dylan Cruz hitting in the three hole. And it's working out. Two at bats, two chances to drive in a run. We'll see if Cruz can get it done this time. Bristow comes set. Cranford leads from second base. The pitch. Breaking ball. Caught the inside half. It's 0 1. That's a good, hard, off speed pitch, too, Hunt. I mean, that thing's at 84 miles an hour. I mean, just falling off the table. Cruz couldn't have done anything with that, I don't think, even if he was looking for it. Won't be the last first pitch breaking ball Dylan Cruz sees in his time in Baton Rouge. I can promise you that. Here comes the 0 1. Crossed up the catcher and got away. Cranford's going to scamper over to third base. Slides in safely. 94 mile an hour fastball that looked very handleable, and it was not handled by Hancock behind home plate. Yeah, and it could have been worse than that. I mean, it was far enough where Cramper was able to take third base, but at least it didn't take Hancock's head off because that ball was coming in with some velocity. And yeah, just a little cross up there, but not sure why. Wouldn't go talk to the pitcher. I guess with a guy not at second base, you just go to single single pitch calls. Here comes a 1 1 to Cruz. Just missed away. It's 1 and 2 and 1. Yeah, if you're Cruz, you're li licking your chops right now. Get it in a hitter's count. 
And what I would do, I mean, you, they liable to throw an off-speed pitch here, but hunt a pitch that you're looking for. If it's fastball, get after it. 2-1. Was a fastball and it missed away. A uh, breaking ball at 86. 3-1 and one the count now to Cruz. He'll step out and adjust the batting gloves. See if the freshman can't break this 2-2 tie here. Cranford at third base. Three and one the count to Cruz. Breaking ball caught the outside corner. And it's three and two. Yeah, this is a tough pitch at three and one. I mean, 84 mile an hour curveball that if it caught the outside corner, it barely caught it, but a good take three one. And now you got a battle here with two strikes. Gavin Dugas would be next if Cruz could extend the inning. Here comes a payoff pitch. Line drive right field. Is it going to hang up? It will for Tanner Allen, who makes the catch. Cruz hit it right on the screws, but it stayed in the air long enough for the right fielder to make the play. So the Tigers do leave a run. We play three at the box. It's two to two on the LSU Sports Radio Network. This is LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Top of the fourth here at the box. It's a 2-2 ball game between LSU and Mississippi State. A.J. Labus back out on the mound. He will face 6-7-8 and eight, Tanner Hatcher and Skinner in the Mississippi State lineup. Got a change out in center field, Buzz. Yeah, Mitchell Sanford comes on to play. He's the sophomore out of Berwick, Louisiana. And I'm thinking Gio just not feeling quite right after taking that 96 mile an hour heater. On, I mean, it looked like right above the kneecap. There's not a lot of meat there. And that probably need to get some ice on it, I would think. You would think so. That's the most logical explanation. He felt OK to run there with the adrenaline pumping. But once you sat down, I think it's stiff a little bit. Probably best to take the rest of the afternoon off. So Mitchell Sanford will go out and play in center field for the Giacomo. We are ready for action here in the fourth. Labus giving up two runs on three hits through three innings of work. Finished the third with a strikeout, and he starts the fourth with a strike there to Tanner. Mississippi State designated hitter. He's a freshman. Came into the game hitting an even 300 from the right side. Labus kicks and fires, chopped foul, and it's 0-2. Yeah, A.J. Labus. His last start against Texas San Antonio was on a Sunday and much like conditions like this it actually was a lot worse as far as the wind blowing out to left field and he went six innings only gave up two runs he struck out seven didn't walk anybody I thought that was just an incredible I was like giving up no runs that day I mean it, the ball was flying out so needs to do the same thing today the O2 is popped up will it stay in play Travinsky gives it a look it will not lands just over our heads and we'll need a new baseball and we'll do the O and two dance again. Tiger infield, Doty at third, Thompson at short, Cranford at second base, and Morgan over at first. Dugas, Sanford, and Cruz left to right in the outfield. 
Davis winds and fires the 0-2. Breaking ball just missed off the outside corner. It's one and two. Yeah, I like that pitch there at 0-2. Not totally off the plate where it's a non-ball. It's actually gives the hitter Tanner has to make a decision there, and it was a perfect go-to spot. Here comes the one-two. Swung on and missed. That is strike three, another Tabasco strikeout. Tabasco, the over, the official hot sauce of LSU <laughs> Athletics. That's out number one here in the fourth. Yeah, and as good as that 0-2 pitch, that was a better 1-2 pitch. Ball just diving off the plate right there, down in the zone. Tanner not able to hold up, not able to catch up to it. That'll bring up Josh Hatcher, junior first baseman. 258 on the season, got a homer. Hits from the left side. Lavis winds and fires. Swung on and missed. It's 0 and 1. Hatcher was named to the preseason All SEC second team. Again, a guy who's been there for a few years, a veteran presence. Here's the 0 1. Fouled into the seats over third baseline. Hatcher had a big night on Friday. Two for four, scored a couple of runs for the Bulldogs. Lavis quickly ahead 0 and 2. Got a new Pearl. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. Grounded to the right side. Going to be picked up by Cranford. Morgan goes back to the bag and takes the throw from Cranford. That is a second out. Yeah, you saw right there Morgan for a second went try to get that ball. That ball's in between second and first. And he realized quickly that Cranford would get there. He scampers back to first base and makes the easy play. But nice communication there between Cranford and Morgan. So quickly two away here in the Bulldog fourth. Bring up Skinner. He grounds to the right side. Cranford over, picks it up, fires to first. That will retire the side. Lavis gets him up and down in order in the fourth. We go to the bottom half. It's two to two right here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. H&E Equipment Services is the official construction equipment partner of LSU Athletics. Call 877-700-RENT or visit he-equipment.com today. Hunt Palmer and Buzzy Highdell with you. High top Alec Box Stadium, Skip Burtman Field. To play the bottom of the fourth inning here between LSU and Mississippi State, it is a 2-2 tie. Tigers trying to stave off a sweep here from Mississippi State. Gavin Dugas digs in against the right-hander Fristo. We're ready for action. Fastball high. It's 1 and 0 to Gavin Dugas. Fristo, just a freshman for Mississippi State, was actually named the SEC Freshman of the Week, the week of March 8th. Check swing from Dugas to the right side, picked up by DeBrule at second. He tosses over to first, and that's out number one. Well, we got a second. Oh, 
update you on some scores. The scoreboard update brought to you by Hancock Whitney, the official bank of LSU Athletics. Learn more at HancockWhitney.com slash LSU. Only two finals of the day so far. Missouri fends off Kentucky. Kentucky was trying to go for the sweep, but Missouri wins that game 5-3. to three. Tennessee wins the series in Athens with a 4-1 victory over the Bulldogs. Kate Doty struck out in the first. He digs back in, pops a foul. It's 0-1. Top of the eighth in Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt going for the sweep against South Carolina. They lead that game 5-4 to four against the Gamecocks. Bottom of the fourth in Oxford. Ole Miss is blanking Auburn 9 to nothing. And top of the fifth in Fayetteville, Arkansas, on top of Alabama, 1-0. to nothing. one pitch to Doty. Missed outside. It's 1-1. One one. Big shift on for the LSU third baseman. Three infielders on the left side of second base. Bristow winds. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball missed away. It's 2-1. Travinsky will be next. Doty. Big power surge early in the season. Got eight dingers on the year for the Tigers. Here's the 2-1. Missed down and away. It's 3-1. Yeah, Doty. Actually, second in the league in runs batted in. And second in the league, tied for second in home runs with eight. Comes a 3-1 pitch. Curveball caught the outside corner. It's 3-2. Cody took a half step down to first base. And home plate umpire told him, eh, come on back. Let's do it again. That yeah, was close. That's a good take, though, 3-1. It's off. Off the plate or right on the plate, the corner, and you don't want to swing at that 3-1. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. High heater blew him away. It's the second out of the inning. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts and an app that lets you bank anytime, anywhere, choosing Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. That's banking reimagined. Capital One, member NA, member FDIC. Doty's gone down on strikes twice, and Hayden Travinsky, the Tiger backstop, will dig in. Travinsky grounded out back in the second. 0 for 1 today. Shreveport, Louisiana, Buzz. Airline High School, the great Todd Walker went there. Travinsky fouls the first pitch back to the screen. He started at Loyola College Prep. I was going to. One of the elite programs in the history of high school baseball and decided probably wasn't good enough to play there. He's good enough at LSU, but Loyola, eh, we're going to go over to Airline and give it a shot. I'm, a, I'm assuming you're a Loyola <laughs> alum. Go Flyers, baby. <laughs> 0-1 oh, to count to Travinsky. Breaking ball hammered foul past Nolan Kane at third base. We'll need a new baseball for the 0-2. Crispy crunchy chicken is the best and fastest growing fried chicken in America you may have never heard of. Founded right here in southern Louisiana. There's a, one near you. Visit crispycrunchy.com crispy for locations. Crispy crunchy chicken, freshly made, perfectly Cajun. 0-2 oh, to the right-handed hitting Travinsky. Fresco winds and fires. Breaking ball just missed the outside corner. And it is 1-2. All knotted up at two, and this will be the last inning before the shadows become a factor as they have crept up to home plate exactly right now. Everything in the sun for another five or eight minutes, and then we'll be playing with some shadows. Here's the one-two pitch. Missed the outside corner, two and two. Yeah, nice job by Trubinsky right there, working a good at bat as you. Mississippi State continues the big shift with all three infielders, ex well, except the first baseman, but all the rest of the infielders on the left side of second base. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Missed high. Three and two. Both bullpens are quiet. Looks like it's Fristo and Labus' game for the time being. Yeah, I'm excuse, sorry about that, Hunt. I'm okay here with Travinsky. 3-2. Wind gusting out a little bit now. Let's try to get the foot down and see if we can hit one to Nicholson. The 3-2 pitch. Tied him up on the inside corner. Strike three. And that will retire at the side. Tigers go down in order in the fourth. It's 2-2 two two at the box on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
Your Fighting Tigers play here. The home for Fighting Tiger Baseball. The LSU Sports Radio Network. Lavis out to work the fifth. It'll be 9-1-2 in the Mississippi State order to greet him. Thus far today, A.J. Lavis, four innings pitch. She's given up two earned runs on three hits. Walked one, struck out a pair. Catcher Forsyth will lead things off. Freshman. for one today. Well, it's the time to talk about these Mississippi State uniforms. I was wondering when you were going to bring it up. I didn't want to be the one. It's just, <laughs> it offends my sensibilities that a baseball team would come out and look like that. They look like a beer league softball team. Um, it looks like they're trying to crush homers and, and natty lights and these things. It's just not working. First pitch to Forsyth's fouled over the bleachers. Well. I guess so one. they figured when they pitched it as well as they did this weekend <laughs> up to this point, they're still pitching it pretty well, but uh, it doesn't really matter what you wear. Black pants. It just, it's just bad. Wow. Comes the 0-1 from Lavis. Just missed the outside corner 1-1. One one. What concerns me more about the look is the, you know, the, uh, how it's going to affect their health <laughs> when it gets to 100 degrees here in Louisiana and Mississippi in the south, really. And they're having to play on a Sunday in the black uniforms. 1-1 one, one pitch misses. It's just, who thought it looked good? When we got, who, who, is, are they still with Adidas? When we got into the meeting room, all right, what are we looking for for Mississippi State baseball uniforms? Because look how good they looked last night in those grades with the script. We're going to go with all black. And somebody's like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. It's, just, <laughs> it's not. Forsyth grounds the second. Cranford scoops it up. Fires over to first in time. And that is the first out of the inning. Well, somebody made the decision, Hunt, and somebody thought they looked good. Well, they good, should be so fired. They, they, Terminated they, on the spot. Hey, look, don't talk too much. LSU went through a black jersey phase back in the 03, 04 years. But they know. weren't black pants. I mean, they were bad. The yeah. smoke era had some bad jerseys. Like, that's a fact. We had the vests working. I think, you know, Tompkins pitched. It, it was bad. But not anything this bad. Quickly one away. No one cares about the uniforms anymore. Back to baseball. <laughs> Tapper back to Lavis. He scoops it up. Underhands to first. To retire Scotty DeBrule. And that's the second out of the inning. Yeah, two quick outs right there by Lavis. And AJ up to 69 pitches on the afternoon. He's done a nice job of managing that pitch count. Yeah, we saw Marceau yesterday go 98 pitches. Jaden Hill went 106 on Friday, and Labus has been a guy at the beginning that's always thrown more pitches. Pulmonary stretched him out even early in the season, more than Marceau and Hill. So as long as he's throwing well, he's going to be out there. It's a fastball strike to the number two hitter, Rowdy Jordan. Labus working quickly here in the state fifth. 90 miles an hour on that heater that caught the outside corner. 0-1 to the Mississippi State center fielder. Another heater just missed. That's one and one. Just got a text in from radio buddy Jacob Hester, who's in the building today, and he also agrees that these uniforms are terrible. <laughs> one and one the count. That's yanked foul, and it's one and two. Well, you got somebody on your side at least, huh? That's good. I don't think there is another side. I think there's probably 35 guys in the <laughs> Mississippi State dugout that think it look, thinks it looks good. But. Need their rods and codes checked out. Here comes a one-two pitch. This is flared towards left field. Out is Thompson. Is he going to run it down? He is. Makes the play to retire the side. A.J. Labus gets him in order here. We're halfway home at the box. It's 2-2 two two on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Freshman right-hander Jackson Fristo out for his third inning of work. He will be greeted by Mitchell Sanford, then Jordan Thompson, and Collier Cranford. That is seven, eight, and nine in the Tiger batting order in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, this game moving right along, Hut. Friday night's game was maybe one of the quickest games I've ever been a part of. Two hours and 32 minutes was Friday. Yesterday game was moving swiftly as well. It was a two hour and 42 minute game. And we're in about an hour and 30 into this one. First pitch to Sanford is laced into the gap in left center field. That's going to get down. Picked up out there by the left fielder Skinner. Into second base goes Sanford. And he's aboard with a leadoff double here in the Tiger fifth. Yeah, that ball right there, kind of just middle part of the plate, and Sanford pulls the hands and stays the other way and hits that ball really through the teeth of the wind as the wind starting to gust out a little more towards right center. And he drove that ball to the opposite field. That ball got all the way to the fence. That was impressive. The Tigers got something cooking here in the bottom of the fifth. Now Thompson tasked with moving Sanford over 90 feet or driving him in here in a 2-2 ball game. Thompson looking over at Pulmonary. He wants the signs one more time. Cameron James, the state third baseman, is going to play inside the bag looking for a bunt here from Thompson. Sanford runs pretty well out at second base. He leads. Bristow's going to step off. Now Fristo's got what he wants, works from the stretch. Looks in the first pitch to Thompson. Thompson squares to bunt, pulls it back, and takes a strike on the outside corner. The all-speed pitch there by Fristo on the outside corner. Thompson saw it the whole way and just pulled it back at the last second, but good first pitch there by Fristo. And see Coach Palmineri trying to get that runner over to third base with less than two outs. Thompson with the little home run power in this lineup. He does have five on the year. The 0 one pitch to Thompson doesn't show bunt and takes the ball down and it's one and one. James still playing on the grass over at third base as well as the first baseman Hatcher has crept in on the grass as well expecting Thompson to bunt. Bristow comes set. Sanford leads from second. The 1 1 pitch skips up there. It's blocked up. Sanford's going to head back to second base. Really nice job by Hancock to smother that one. Ty Floyd getting loose in LSU's bullpen, and you're right, Hancock. That ball was well in front of home plate in, in the dirt, and Hancock kept it blocked up. Sanford did a nice job of uh, trying to be aggressive and look at taking the bag, but then he saw that the ball didn't carry him too far away from Hancock. and quickly put on the brakes and retreated back to second. So two and one the count to Thompson. Bristow comes set. Checks the runner kicks and fires. Heater missed. It's three and one. Yeah we'll take that one not sure it must have been low. I appreciate Tyler Horka, who covers Mississippi State for the Clarion Ledger, of tweeting out my uh, my handle and my thoughts on the uniforms. I don't think I'll be invited to any barbecues in the state of Mississippi anytime soon, based on my Twitter interaction. But that's okay. Three and one pitch to Thompson. Here it comes. That missed high. Thompson draws a walk. He'll head on down to first base. Yeah, Thompson ends up putting together a good at bat there, and got to believe it's Coach Paul Maneri is in Collier Cranford's ear right now, seeing what maybe he'd be comfortable with. Either hey, we're going to lay down a bun, or don't be surprised. Paul Maneri loves the hit and run too. He always used to tell us he actually loves the hit and run more than a bun because in a bun situation you're basically giving up and out. In a hit and run situation, it's you know, there's an opportunity for the hitter to move a baseball through the infield and not have to give up an out. But I suspect Collier Cranford will be called on a bunt here. They'll pinch the corners in. 
up the middle. They'll play double play depth here against Cranford. Bristow's got what he wants. Kicks and fires. Cranford shows bunt. He pops it up, and it lands foul between the first baseman and the catcher. Hancock, the catcher, pounced out there, and Hatcher was charging in hard, but neither one could get there, and it's just a strike. Yeah, nice break right there for LSU. I envisioned Hancock and Hatcher right there as they were both moving quickly towards the baseball and almost losing their their footing. I was. It looked like maybe they were going to crash together. Thankful they didn't. They didn't have a collision there, but again, Cranford gets a, and LSU gets a hair lucky there and gets another opportunity. So and one's the count. The nine-hole hitter Cranford digging in. Morgan would be next. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Shows bunt, pulls it back. He did not go, and the ball is low. It's one and one. Yeah, good take back right there from Cranford. And if I'm Coach Maneri, I mean, even if it gets in a hitter's count, I, I keep the bunt on, but be interesting to see. Again, Coach Maneri likes to play aggressive, likes to get runners in motion. Big spot in the game here in the bottom of the fifth inning. We're a 2-2 two -two tie. Kicks and fires. The runners are going. Cranford swings away. It's a flare into center field. Center fielder coming on hard. He's going to make the catch. Fire back to second base is late as the runners retreat. And there is one out. And there was the hit and run right there. Coach Maneri really rolling the dice, getting the runners going as the hit and run was called. Cranford just not able to hit that ball on the ground anywhere as that's really the only place you don't want to hit it is up in the air. And luckily, for Thompson and Sanford, they were able to retreat back to their bases. So now one is away, and the lineup turns over for Trey Morgan. Lead off hitting first baseman, walked in the first and grounded out in the third. Hits from the left side. Bristow peering in at Hancock, his catcher's got what he likes. It comes set. First pitch to Morgan. Swung on and missed. Heater got it by him. And it's 0 and 1. That was a good 93 mile an hour fastball there. And Morgan, over the last couple of weeks, found he's having a little difficult time catching up with the heat. You get the foot down, just try to move the baseball here. That's next pitch here by Fristo will be his 40th of the afternoon. Outfield really playing Morgan to hit the ball the other way. The left fielder's only 20 feet or so off the line and left. Center fielder shaded well over and towards the gap, and right fielder fairly straight away. Wind gusting from left field to right field on a sun splash day here at the box. We're going to have a conversation with Fristo here. Yeah, Coach Scott Foxhall in his third season with the Mississippi State Bulldogs just wants to go out, have a quick conversation. Obviously, a big part of the game. It seems like we say that all the time. Every every time you get a runners in scoring position during the SEC, it seems like a big part of the of the game as every run is so crucial. When the Tigers win, you win. Enter promo code LSU50 the day after an LSU baseball win and receive 50% off your online order at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's in this baseball season. Platter up at Acme Oyster House. Authentic New Orleans seafood with a serious side of fun. Acme Oyster House, where baseball's much more fun with seafood. Meeting is broken up by the home plate umpire, and we're about ready for a little bit more action as Morgan digs in from the left side. Fristo toes the slab. We have Sanford leading at second base, and over at first, that's Thompson. 2-2 two -two score here in the bottom of the fifth. Fristo has what he wants from Hancock. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Fastball missed, and it's 1-1. One and one. While the outfield shifted to hit for Morgan to go the other way, the infield plays him a little bit to pull. Third baseman is James, and he's well off the bag there at third base. 1-1 one, one the count with one out here. Inside move, nothing doing at second base. Just checking on Sanford to make sure he doesn't stray too far.
Here's the 1-1. Breaking ball missed, and it's 2-1. and one. Yeah, Morgan does a good job of usually getting himself in good hitters' counts. Now it's just figuring out a, a way to hit the ball where the, where the fielders aren't. Shadows creeping out in front of home plate now. Gorgeous day for baseball here in the capital city. Here comes a 2-1 from Fresto. Swung on and grounded to short. Could be two. Take it himself. Fire on to first in time. And that will retire the side. Really nice play by Forsythe around the bag at second base. And that erases the Tiger threat. We've played five here at the box. It's 2-2 two two on the LSU Sports Radio Network. <laughs> This is LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. AJ Labus out for his sixth inning of work today on a Sunday. EFCU Financial offers great rates on home loans, home equity lines of credit, auto loans, and more. To apply, visit any location or efcufinancial.org. It'll be 3-4-5 in the Mississippi State order. Here in the six, Tanner Allen, Cameron James, and Luke Hancock will face Labus. Yeah, Labus up to 73 pitches on the afternoon. Again, Ty Floyd down in LSU's bullpen is starting to get hot, or really hot, I should say. Comes the first pitch to Allen. Just missed. It's 1-0. Allen's 0 for 1 today. Comes the 1-0 pitch. That's in there for a strike, and it's 1-1. One one. Yeah, the weekend's really played out a lot like, I mean, besides for LSU fans, LSU winning, it's played out just like I thought it would. I mean, a lot of low-scoring games, not a lot of hits, and today's playing out much like the same. Comes the 1-1. One one. That's in there for a strike, 1-2. and two. We knew State's pitching would be good. We we thought LSU's hitting was good, but we didn't really know. We, you know, it hadn't faced a ton of great pitching over the first few weekends, and we've got a great test here with Mississippi State. And we got a good one brewing here. Here comes a one-two. Grounded foul past the bag at first. And we'll do it again. Tigers only nine hits through the first two games and only two here. That ain't going to get it done most weekends. No, not in the SEC. Here comes a 1-2 pitch. That's grounded just foul. Down into the Tiger pen. They'll reload Labus with some new ammo and we'll do it again. And you said it, Hunt. I mean, the thing is, it's not like it's going to get a whole lot easier. I mean, you got Vanderbilt coming to town. Uh, you go to Kentucky, who's Kentucky's at the top of the league and pitching as well as they're the, number, the third rated team in the SEC in pitching. So you've got go to Tennessee next weekend. One, two pitch is down. It's two and two. 
So LSU, again, they, they've got their work cut out for them, but everybody does in the SEC, right? I mean, every weekend, it's there are no freebies, no gimme games. Allen hits third for Mississippi State. He's leading off the top of the sixth here. Labus working from the windup. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Change up, strike three, swing and miss from Allen. And that is another Tabasco strikeout. Tabasco, the official hot sauce of LSU Athletics. Yeah, really good off-speed right pitch right there to the three-hole hitter. You're talking about a changeup. I, I got to believe it's the circle change by Labus, really working that them fingers to the ground, and that ball just dying off the table away from the left-handed hitter, Allen. Here comes Cameron James, third baseman, digs in. Looks at ball one. A little bit down. James has got a pair of hits today and as many chances, driven in one as well. Last time up, he pumped a double in the gap there in left center. Tigers will shift him on the infield. Comes the 1-0, line drive into left field, and it's a three for three day for Cameron James. Smoked that one into left center. He rounds first, and we'll head on back. Labus left that one up a little bit, Buzz. Well, James had two hits coming into today, but he's been kind of quiet for the first few games, but you weren't going to keep him down much longer. James, the number 49th ranked prospect by D1 baseball for college players. And he's also in the top 10. He's ranked, or he's number three in the SEC in stolen bases. So we're going to have our work cut out for us here with James sitting at first base. That'll bring up Luke Hancock. Hits from the left side. He does the catching for Mississippi State. James leads from first. Labus checks him. Works from the stretch. That's a one hopper stabbed by Cranford to second for one. Thompson back to first. Double play. And that will retire the side. State got a hit. But a retired in order. Played five and a half here for the box. It's two to two on the LSU Sports Radio Network. to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The dairy farmers of Louisiana are making sure you can fuel your body with nature's energy drink, real milk, your source of protein, calcium, and vitamin D. On Palmer and Buzzy Heidel here at the box. It is 2-2. Two two. Tigers in Mississippi State on a Sunday. Tigers trying to avoid the sweep. They'll send Drost, Cruz, and Dugas up to face... Jackson Frisco and the freshman has been very, very good for Mississippi State through three innings of work today. Yeah, Frisco only one walk, three strikeouts, giving up two hits, no runs, and he's kind of silenced the Tigers' bat after the first inning, two runs. Bross digs in. He's 0 for 1 today, takes one high, and it's 1 and 0. Dross walked back in the first, struck out in the third. Left-handed hitter facing the right-hander, Fristo. He'll step out and call time. Two, three, and four in the order. A good time to get something cooking if you're LSU. 
comes the 1-0 pitch, misses high, and it's 2-0. Well, if you LSU, you'd like to see them maybe get better from an offensive standpoint of manufacturing runs, not just relying on hitting the ball out of the ballpark. We hadn't seen a homer this weekend from LSU, and it's been hard for them to score runs. 2-0's in there for a strike. It's 2-1. Tiger Faithful didn't love the call there. A home paid umpire, Marcus Patillo. State plays draw straight away. Here's the 2-1. Swung on and missed. It's 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, and Dross just not able to catch up to Fristo's fastballs. You would think with the latest, the swings that Dross has given, that Fristo would just stay with the heat here. Now they'll shift Dross. The third baseman will go over to a traditional second base spot. The second baseman will step back into shallow right field. Nobody over there around the third base bag. The 2-2 is down and in, and it'll be full. That just goes to show, what do we know up here in the booth? <laughs> Fristo with the all-speed pitch there gets away from Hancock. Yeah, big leadoff guy here in the bottom of the six. If Dross can find a way on, you've got a good hitter in Cruz waiting on deck. Here comes the payoff pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. Fristo froze Dross there. Freshman didn't like the call, but he's down on strikes. No, and that's a tough spot right there. Dross, though, I know Coach Manero will probably tell him, hey, with two strikes, what that told me right there was you were looking for a walk just because the pitch was down in the zone but with two strikes you can't be ready to toss the bat back and get down to first base you've got to be ready to swing I know coach will probably have that conversation with him but still a young player is draw still learn Cruz digs in takes a strike so in one 93 mile an hour heater on the outer black there Cruz grounded into a fielder's choice back in the first Lined out back in the third, stung it, but it hung up into right field. Comes the 0-1. That's high. It's 1-1. One one. Fristo at 6'4", 210 pounds. We saw Sarantola, 6'5", 225 pounds. So a lot like Sarantola, but a better strike thrower is Fristo. Here comes the 1-1. Missed away. It's two and one. Earn an LSU degree from anywhere through LSU Online. Experience world-class customer service, academic rigor, and affordable online learning options. Learn more at online at .lsu.edu. Here comes the two-one to Cruz. Fouled away, and it's two and two. Steady die to breaking stuff to Cruz today. Not surprising. Well, and, and the book's out on Cruz. I mean, it's not going to take long anyway. But in the leadoff spot, maybe you see a few more good pitches to hit. When you're in that three hole, now there's nobody on base right now, but you're going to have guys on base, and they're going to pitch him a lot differently. Cruz can handle it, I think. But you're right, Hunt. He needs to be ready to try to hit all speed pitches because he's going to see a heavy dose of them. The 2-2. Fastball blew it by him. And it's out number two. Yeah, they pitched him backwards a little bit there, didn't they? I mean, they went all speed a little early, and then late they went heater up in the zone, and Cruz just not able to catch up to it. Tiger fans, listen to Paul Maneri give the inside scoop about LSU baseball on the Paul Maneri Show, presented by Hancock Whitney from 7 to 8 p.m. each Monday, live starting March 29th, and TJ Ribs on South Acadian, only on the LSU Sports Radio Network, and in Baton Rouge on Eagle 98.1. Gavin Dugas steps in from the right side, takes a breaking ball in there for a strike, and it's 0-1. Fristo's in a groove. Yeah, settle, settling in nicely, and you can see why there's a lot to like about the young pitcher in Fristo. Here comes the 0-1. That's hit high and deep to left. Will the park hold it? Back at the track, at the wall. It will not. That thing is gone. Gavin Dugas has broken a tie. Got all of that when it was hit so high, though, right? And really, I would say the win is not helping that ball out as that ball was hit extremely high in the air and just kept carrying and carrying until Skinner just ran out of room there in left field. You're right, Buzz. That thing was way up in the air, and I kept watching Skinner, and he kept drifting, kept drifting, and he ran out of real estate. That ball's about four rows up in the left field landing. So Dugas breaks the tie here in the 6-3-2 Tiger lead here in game three. Here comes Fristo working to Cade Doty. It's fouled off the umpire and it's 0-1. Yeah, and that'll put a little 
buzz back into the air here at Alex Box Stadium as Tiger fans forget forgetting what the homers feel like here as that's the first one of the weekend and Dugas hits his fourth of the year. Doty's got eight of them. As he digs in. Here comes the 0-1. Line drive foul down in the Mississippi State bullpen. It's 0-2. It's amazing how one pitch, one swing can change how the the game was going. We talked about Fristo getting in a groove and looking like he was settling in. And one pitch up in the zone to a good hitter in Dugas. And Dugas puts the Tigers on top. Doty now works the 0 2. Fouled away. And it's will remain at 0 2. That one got a pretty good piece of Hancock there behind the home plate. Yeah, the umpire and catcher here aren't <laughs> taking a few beatings back there. A couple foul tips. Risto into the windup. Here's the 0 2. That's a popped foul and out of play. Travinsky on deck. Ty Floyd still down there in the Tiger bullpen. It would appear Labus would come out for the seventh, but Floyd still warming. Yeah, he's been warming for a while, and with the catcher down, really getting loose. Here comes another 0-2. That one missed away, and it's 1-2. Approaching 4 o'clock here on a Sunday afternoon in Baton Rouge. Tigers and Bulldogs game three Mississippi State taking the first two games of the series LSU working to stave off the sweep here they've taken a three to two lead here in the sixth here comes the one two from Fristo breaking ball missed away two and two that good at bat here by Doty laying off some tough pitches fouling off a 0 2 pitch good 0 2 pitch that was up in the zone so putting together a good one. Three infielders left side of second base against Doty. Here comes a 2 2. Swung on and foul tipped. Hancock couldn't secure it, so the count will remain 2 and 2. Doty out of Denham Springs High School. We gave some love for Airline with Todd Walker. Of course, Denham Springs, a lot of good ones out of that high school with Russ Johnson and Ben McDonald. Guys that have come to LSU and had great careers. Two balls and two strikes here with two out in the Tiger six and Doty will step out. Here comes a pitch fouled away. Doty's hanging in there. 94 on that fastball from the big right handed freshman. Yeah, it seems like just a broken record just changed the name played out on the back of the jersey. It's going to be 92 to 95. Every guy that Mississippi State brings in, it seems like. 2-2. Two -two. This is high and away. And State's going to win a lot of games in this league with the, the arms they can bring out there. McLeod on Friday is excellent. And the guys they can bring out of the bullpen, specifically Sims. Bristow today has been great. It's it's a heck of a staff. Yeah, Smith on Friday, well, I, I was really impressed with out of the bullpen. Yeah, they're not going to have to score a bunch of runs to win games, and you see why. Here comes a full count pitch to Doty. Swung on, chopped, foul past third base. We'll do it again. That's just who's going to give in here. Fristo's got to keep challenging Doty, and Doty's got to keep working to get a good pitch to hit either draw the walk or get you one that you can drive. Cristo still working from the windup. Looks into Hancock. He's got what he wants. Kicks and fires. Missed away and Doty draws a walk. That's a heck of a bit of bat from the Tiger third baseman. Yeah, Fristo just kept, kept, kept making good pitches and Doty either would spoil him or take it for a ball, and he eventually works the base on balls. So that'll bring up Hayden Dravinsky, the Tiger backstop. He's 0 for 2 today. Ground him out back in the second, struck out in the fourth. Hits with an open stance. A lot of pop in this young man's bat. Doty leads from first. No. Keep the shift on for Travinsky. Nobody occupying the right side of the infield other than the first baseman holding Doty. 
First pitch to Travinsky misses down a 92 mile an hour fastball. It's 1 0. Number 29, Carlisle Kessler is getting loose down in Mississippi State's bullpen. They've got two guys, Kessler, one of them. And that's number 14, Riley Self, the other right hander. Check on Doty, and he is back in standing at first base. Mitchell Sanford in the on deck circle. He'd be next if Trzynski could extend the inning here with two outs in the sixth. The pitch, check swing, called strike. It's one and one. What breeze there is kind of blowing a little bit out towards right center. 1-1 one, one pitch to Travinsky, right in there for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. That Bender split the plate. Travinsky wasn't quite looking for it. Doty down at first base does not have a stolen base or an attempt on the year. Not sure this is the time to, to start Doty for his first one of the year with Travinsky up. See if Travinsky can't get one up and out of the ballpark. This is 1-2 fouled away off the screen, first base side. Count remains one and two. Yeah, power on power here. We talked about the size of Fristo. Travensky, no slouch himself at 6'3, 218 pounds. Gets that big leg kick, gets that leg way up in the air and really swings aggressively through the zone. Here comes the one two. Missed away, and it's two and two. We mentioned the shadows a couple times. They are now basically splitting home plate and the pitcher's mound, which makes things difficult on the hitter. Yeah, certainly gives the advantage to the pitcher when those shadows start creeping in. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here. Cold strike three. And that'll sit Travinsky down, but the Tigers do take the lead on a Gavin Dugas solo homer. We've played six here at the box. It's 3-2 Tigers on the LSU Sports. Well, 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 Fighting Tigers play here. The home for Fighting Tiger Baseball. The LSU Sports Radio Network. Six innings in the books here at the box, and so is A.J. Labus' day. He gives way to freshman Ty Floyd. This pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Buzz, tell us about the Tiger right-hander. Uh, Ty Floyd, the freshman out of Rock Martin, Georgia, 6'2", 194 pounds, making his eighth appearance of the year. He's 0-1 with a 4.7. ERA and seven and two-thirds innings pitch. Give up, giving up four hits, four runs, five walks, and 16 strikeouts. More than two strikeouts an inning. He's got good stuff. He's going to throw the ball mid-90s. 
And he's got to keep this. Uh, he's got to keep this Tiger team in it right here with a lead, three to two. It'll be Logan Tanner, Josh Hatcher, and Braylon Skinner, six, seven, and eight in the Mississippi State order to greet the freshman Ty Floyd. Tanner digs in from the right side. He's the state DH. Floyd works from the windup. Here's his first pitch of the afternoon. Swung on and missed. And it's 0 and 1. At Tanner, one for three in both opening game, the Friday and Saturday game. Here comes the 0-1 from Floyd. Line foul. Back over the LSU dugout, and it's quickly 0-2. Yeah, two good heaters right there from Floyd at 91 miles an hour. Tanner just not able to get the barrel of the bat out, and quickly ahead 0-2 is Floyd. Floyd puts his glove near the belt, goes into the windup, rocks and fires the 0-2, swung on and missed. That's strike three. Another Tabasco strikeout. Tabasco, the official hot sauce of LSU athletics. Yeah, might make it strikeout number 17 for Ty Floyd on the season. And Floyd, one of these, one of many freshmen that LSU have on this team with Helmers and Blake Money that Coach Maneri has, has, has a lot of confidence in. You see him put him in big situations and expects him to deliver. That'll bring up Josh Hatcher from the left side. Looks at one down. It's 1-0. and oh. It's a pretty easy delivery, too, Hunt. If you watch him, he just catches it, gets back on. It's not real herky-jerky. He's a nice-sized kid. Again, it's 6'2", 194 pounds, but just kind of rocks and fires, huh? Here comes the 1-0. Fisted foul back off the screen, and it's one and one. If this year has taught us anything, it's that we can all do more than we ever thought possible. Our Lady of the Lake would like to thank the community for its ongoing support and the healthcare heroes working on the front line. Our Lady of the Lake, the official healthcare provider of LSU athletics. It's one and one to Hatcher. Comes the pitch. In there for a strike, and it's one and two. Yeah, good change of speeds right there from Floyd. Pumping a lot of fastballs and then just pulls the string a little bit there and the get me over pitch. Here comes the one two from the Tiger freshman. Swung on and missed. That's another Tabasco strikeout. Tabasco is the official hot sauce of LSU Athletics. And Floyd re reared back, got a little extra on that one. That was the 94 mile an hour fastball. And good morning, good afternoon, good night for Hatcher. So that'll bring up Braylon Skinner, sophomore left fielder from State. Hits from the left side. Floyd's working quickly. Here comes the first pitch. Line foul over the first base dugout. 0-1. One, oh one. Or Skinner broke a scoreless tie back on Friday with a big fly off Jaden Hill into the seats in right field. Yeah, he had three at-bats coming into that game. That was his first home run of the year. The 0-1 pitch in there for a strike. 93 miles an hour from Floyd, and he's ahead 0-2. Yeah, this is where you can't let up, though. You've got the first two guys out quickly on strikeouts, and you get ahead of Skinner 0-2. Got to make a quality pitch here. Here comes the 0-2 pitch from Ty Floyd. Cold strike three on the inside quarter. Another Tabasco strikeout. Tabasco, the official hot sauce of LSU Athletics. Ty Floyd comes in and strikes out the side in the Bulldog seven. It's stretch time at the Fox. Tigers lead 3-2 on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
Back to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers will try to add to a 3-2 lead here in the bottom of the seventh. We've got a pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Buzz, who are we looking at? Yeah, we're looking at Carlisle Kessler making his fifth appearance of the year. He's 2-0 with a .96 ERA and nine and a third innings pitch, giving up five hits, one run, four walks, and 13 strikeouts. And he's a... He's, an average arm for Mississippi State as far as velocity goes. He's 87 to 91, and he's going to be a mostly fastball changeup guy with an occasional slider. He likes to come right at you. He likes to work away from the hitters, and so we'll see what Kessler has to offer the Tiger hitters. We'll start with Mitchell Sanford, who came in for Giovanni DiGiacomo earlier, and he's one for one with a double into the left center field gap. First pitch from Kessler. Just missed inside, and it's 1-0. Yeah, that looked like the change up there to start off Sanford. Just missed out of the zone. State will play Sanford straight up. Here comes the 1-0 pitch from Kessler. Down, 2-0. Sanford up to 281 on the year. Here comes a 2-0. Sprayed foul off the screen. Two and one. The first two pitches of the at bat were soft, looked like change ups to start Sanford up out of the zone, and then 91 mile an hour heater. Sanford just couldn't catch up to it, fouls it off. Here comes a 2 1. Shot back up the middle, right by Kessler into center field, and Mitchell Sanford is two for two. Yes, Sanford did not get the start today, comes in. During the game to replace the Giacomo who took a pitch off the top of the knee. Sanford having a day right now. That one just about took Kessler with it into center field there. Yeah, ball hit right back on the right on the screws back up the middle. A lot of hits in the middle of the field. So Jordan Thompson will dig in. Tiger shortstop. Hitting eight today. Lined into a double play in the second and walked back in the fifth. Kessler, the stretch, shows bunt. It's bunted back to the mound. Kessler will scoop it up. Fire to the second baseman covering first. To retire Thompson, sack will go one to four. And down to second base goes Mitchell Sanford. Yeah, nice job right there by Thompson. Was trying to do that in his last at bat and then didn't get the bunt down, but then Drew the walk, so it worked out just the same. Number 32, Parker Stenek getting loose down in Mississippi State's bullpen now. All quiet down in the Tiger bullpen. Floyd struck out the side. I would imagine we'll see him for another inning. We'll get another shot to see him. Sanford leads from second as Collier Cranford digs in. Looks at an off-speed pitch away. It's 1-0. Cranford playing a nice second base for the last few games. Coach Manera has inserted him into the lineup. I think if he wants to <laughs> he wants to stick there for a while, this is a big spot to drive in a run for LSU. And for a little insurance here for the Tigers, they lead three to two as we play the bottom of the seventh. One another count. Missed upstairs with a change up. It's two and him. Cranford gotten himself in a good a good count back in the third when he hit the base hit between shortstop and third base. A good count again here. He needs to hunt a pitch and look to drive the baseball. Big hole in between first and second. It's where they hold Sanford. We'll go an inside move and run Sanford back to second base. Just checking on him. Cranford hits in the nine hole. Trey Morgan, the Tiger leadoff man, will hit next.
Here comes a 2-0. Ground ball towards second. Backhanded by the second baseman. He'll throw on the first base in time. Sweet little pick up there by Scotty DeBrule for the second out. And Mitchell Sanford scampers over to third base. And yeah, that ball was actually hit right on the screws. And I thought DeBrule, as he was keeping Sanford on at second base, he really moved his footwork back to cover his position, and the ball was hit the opposite way, so he had to redirect. You're right, hon. He made a nice little pickup there. Good hands by DeBrule and to get Cranford out at first base. So it'll be up to Morgan. Try to extend this inning and drive home that insurance run from third base. He digs in with two outs. Walked in the first and grounded out in the third and the fifth. Hitting in the leadoff spot today for the first time. 312 hitter on the year. Kessler works from the windup. Fires. Morgan fouls it back over the screen. And it's 0-1. Hargrove EPC is your full-service engineering project management and technical services firm that has garnered a reputation for delivering unparalleled service. Before your next project, visit HargroveEPC.com and learn why we are the right people in the right place at the right time. State's left fielder is 20 feet from the line <laughs> over, and I've never seen a left fielder play there before against Morgan. They really shade him to go the other way. Here's the 0-1. It misses high and outside. It's 1-1. One one. Yeah, as I glanced down there, Hunt, I actually thought that might have been somebody in the bullpen protecting <laughs> the pitcher, but it's the left fielder, Skinner. You're right. He's, I mean, right on the line. Morgan does go the other way very well. Center fielder shaded that way into the left center field gap. Here comes the 1-1, sprayed foul off into the seats in left field over towards the U-High practice field. It's one and two. Sun-soaked day here at the box. Tigers and Bulldogs. It's a 3-2 ball game in LSU's favor here in the bottom of the seventh. Tigers trying to add to the lead as Mitchell Sanford leads from third base with two outs. Here comes the 1-2 pitch to Trey Morgan. Line drive into center field for a base hit. Big hit for Trey Morgan as he rounds first base. He's headed into second. He's going to make it in there with the double, and the Tigers have a 4-2 to two lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Great piece of hitting right there. Gets a pitch he can handle and drives it past the second baseman, DeBrule, and gets on his horse as Allen cuts it off nicely, but with Morgan with his speed and the way he was busting it out of the box, no chance of getting him at second base. That's a big hit for Trey Morgan there. Fired up, sliding into second base. Now Brody Dross will step in. Also hits from the left side. 0 for 2 today with a walk. He struck out a couple of times. 4-2 to two Tigers here in the bottom of the seventh. Dross awaits the first pitch, swings and misses at an off-speed pitch. And it's 0-1. Mississippi State pushed one across in the first. LSU answered with two of their own in the first to take a two-run lead. Mississippi State even things up in the third. Gavin Dugas broke a 2-2 tie with a homer in the sixth. And Trey Morgan's RBI single here in the seventh gives LSU that 4-2 advantage. Drost awaits the 0-1. Swung on and missed. Breaking ball down, and it's 0-2. Another off-speed pitch there. That one better than the first. That one down in the zone, and Dross just swung over the top of it. That's what you see a lot from Kessler. You see the fastball change up. That's his, really a two-pitch pitcher. He'll throw the breaking pitch in there every now and then, but it's mostly fastball change-ups. I believe Devin Fontenot's grabbed a baseball down in LSU's bullpen. 0-2 the count to Dross. Change-up down. Just one and two. If that's Fontenot, he went with some new shoes, and it is Fontenot. Got away from the white shoes. Pitchers are weird. <laughs> they, they do weird things. All right, well, baseball players in general do a lot of superstitious things. I'm here for it. It's what makes baseball great. Exactly. Couldn't agree more. Here comes the one-two. That ball's hit hard to right center field. Back at the track, at the wall, and it is gone. Brody Cross leaves the yard, and the Tigers now lead it 5-2. to two. Kessel went change up on the first two pitches, and Cross was way out in front of him. He tried to sneak the 91 mile an hour fastball by him with two strikes, and Cross able to get the barrel of the bat out, and that ball was true. 
driven out of the right center gap on a line. He jumped all over that thing. Just not where you want that two-strike pitch there for Kessler. I shorted the Tigers a run there. It's 6-2. to two. A three spot here in the seventh. It took a couple of days, but the home run bats finally showed up. I think Chris Limonis has seen enough from his right-hander. He's going to go to the mound for a pitching change brought to you by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. We'll take a timeout, tell you who's coming in for the Bulldogs next on the LSU Sports Radio Network. to the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers have added three to their lead here in the seventh. It is six to two. Mississippi State goes to the bullpen. Buzz, what you got? Yeah, it goes to number 32, Parker Stinnett out of Oxford, Mississippi. Stinnett making his fourth appearance of the year. He has a zero ERA and three innings pitch. He's giving him no hits, no runs, one walk, and eight strikeouts. He's enough. He's another power arm, 92, 95 miles an hour. It's going to be fastball slider. He comes right at you. He attacks the zone. So you need to be ready to hit if you're Dylan Cruz. Got some serious lettuce coming out of the back of that hat as well, <laughs> coming in out of the bullpen. That kind of reminds you of Blake Money a little bit, doesn't he? I mean, same build as Stanette. Not quite as big as Money at 6'1", 190 pounds. Dylan Cruz digs in. We'll hit with two outs here in the Tiger seventh. The first pitch missed outside. It's one and zero. Stanette 94 on that first heater to Cruz. Comes the one zero pitch. So on and hit in the air to center field. Shouldn't be much of an issue out there for Rowdy Jordan, who waits for it to come down and makes the play. So Stanette comes in, makes two pitches, and gets out of the jam, but LSU adds three to the lead in the seventh inning. Big blow is a Brody Dross two-run homer over the right center field wall after seven innings of play here at the box at 6-2 LSU on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
This is LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers lead at 6-2 to two at the box. Ty Floyd back out for another inning of work. In his first inning of work, he needed 10 pitches to strike out the side. He'll work to Forsyth in the nine hole, and that'll turn the line over, over to, to Brule and Jordan. First pitch here. The Forsyth's a heater. Swung on and missed. It's 0-1. Yeah, with Floyd on last inning and working so quickly, didn't give you the final line on Labus. He went six innings, four hits, two runs, one walk, three strikeouts. Solid day at the office for Mr. Labus. The 0-1. Caught the outside corner with a fastball at 92, and it's 0-2. Yeah, almost a mirror image of last week's start against Texas San Antonio, except strikeouts against San Antonio. He had seven, but only two runs given up. It gives you an opportunity to win every single Sunday. Floyd, the 0-2. That's sprayed foul over the LSU bullpen down the line in right field. Floyd throwing a lot of strikes coming out of the bullpen. That will make Paul Maneri and Allen Dunn happy campers. <laughs> well, you don't ever want to see pitchers walk, guys, but especially in a tight game when it's getting late in the game and you bring on your relievers. You want to see them fill up the strike zone. Floyd doing just that. Comes the 0-2 pitch. Fastball missed high and it's one and two. Mentioned at the top of the show, LSU gave up three runs last night and all three reached via walk. Just giving base runners hurt you every time. Well, if you make Mississippi State try to beat you without the walk, it's going to be hard for them because their offense isn't that potent. One, two pitch, cold strike three, 92 mile an hour heater. That's another Tabasco strikeout. Tabasco, the official hot sauce of LSU athletics. Floyd's faced four hitters, and they've all gone down on strikes. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's a good heater. Don't get me wrong on the, on the a in a perfectly placed spot, but I'm thinking the shadows might have a little something to do as well as Mississippi State not able to pick up the baseball very well right now. Be a pinch hitter for Mississippi State here. It's Tanner Leggett. Leggett will hit for DeBrule. Leggett's a 231 hitter on the year. He awaits the first pitch from Ty Floyd. Fastball strike on the outside corner at 92, 0 and 1. Yeah, Leggett came in for an at bat in Friday night's game. He was 0 for 1. Here comes the 0 1. Fastball missed away. Failed to mention Drew Bianco has checked into the game for LSU. He is in center field replacing Mitchell Sanford. Bit of a defensive replacement there. One and one the count to Leggett. Floyd kicks and fires. Line drive into center field. That's a base hit. Leggett checks in and pumps a single into center. First man to reach against Ty Floyd. And Mississippi State has a base runner with one out here in the top of the eighth. And that might have been one of Floyd's better pitches of his outing so far, and Leggett did a nice job of taking that pitch. It was down in the zone. He didn't try to do too much, just drove it right back where it came from. You know, Mississippi State not going to go down without a fight. Well, that'll bring up Rowdy Jordan. He'll hit from the left side here with one out in the sixth. It's in the eighth. Floyd working from the stretch for the first time. Kicks and fires. Missed down. It's 1 0. LSU bullpen all seated. Fontenot had gotten up there for a bit, but this is Floyd's inning of work. Two runs on five hits for Mississippi State. No errors for the Bulldogs. LSU six runs on five hits. Pair of homers. Big swings for the Tigers. Floyd comes set, 1-0. That misses inside, it's 2-0. Tanner Allen, the right fielder, is on deck. And Fontenot really starting to quickly get loose down in LSU's bullpen. Tigers. Play straight away on defense. Morgan, of course, holding the runner at first. 2-0 the count. Floyd sets and fires. That missed inside. It's 3-0. 
Tiger freshman needs to bow his neck here and find the strike zone. Well, she leads by four here in the top of the eighth. Floyd got what he wants from Tavrinsky. He sets the 3 0. Missed badly with that one. It's a walk. Jordan trots down to first, and Mississippi State has him at first and second with one out here in the eighth. Isn't it amazing, Hunt, how the pitcher can be just cruising right along and one just little hit or bad call or, or a pitch that just gets out of the zone. It just changes the whole complexion of the inning. And Floyd was just cruising right along. He pinch hit Leggett. Leggett does a nice piece of hitting up the middle, and then he can't find the strike zone for a hitter. And again, now you've got the hit her up a, a ball that leaves the yard you, it's a one run game so the game's far from over and it just seems like every game it, it, it's so tough to win and coach Paul Maneri knows that we've had that discussion many a times in his office that it doesn't even when they seem easy they aren't easy Alan Dunn out to talk to his young freshman right hander I want to remind you the sporty 2021 Toyota Camry speaks for itself and the RAV4 is perfect for any adventure hurry into your local Toyota dealer or visit buyatoyota.com today Tanner Allen hits in the three hole for Mississippi State. Came into the game at 297, pair of homers. Today's 0 for 1, was driven in a run and scored one. Hits from the left side. Runners lead from first and second. Floyd to the belt. His first pitch to Allen is on the way. In there for a strike, 0 and 1. Yeah, dangerous part of the lineup here. Allen, the three-hole hitter. You got three, four, five due up with State Bulldogs on base. Travinsky going through his series of signals. Fontenot still warming down in the Tiger pen. This is Ty Floyd's game right now. The 0-1 pitch. Grounded. Fair inside the bag. Morgan can't pick it up at first. It's over down by the wall. The run's going to score from second base. Runner at first trots into second. Will throw the brakes on there. That's going to be an RBI single, I believe, in Mississippi State. Pushes one across here in the eighth. Coach Paul Maneri thinking that ball was foul, and so he's wanting to discuss this with the umpires as we get the benefit of the replay, and it's close. I, I can't tell from that replay if the ball was foul or not, but Trey Morgan got a glove on it, just couldn't quite handle it as it brought him towards the line. It looked fair from up here, Buzz, and that's just a tough hop that Morgan tried to pick it up on. I don't, no better set of hands on the Tiger roster than those right there, but wasn't able to make the play. So ball ricochets over by the wall, allows a run to score, and that's going to complete the afternoon for Ty Floyd, who was brilliant in the seventh, and they ran into a little bit of trouble in the eighth, and he's going to give away to Devin Fontenot, pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. We'll take a timeout and tell you about the Tiger right hand when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
This is LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back here at the box, Tigers lead it 6-3, to three, but Mississippi State has a couple on with one out. Ty Floyd gives way to Fireball and Junior Devin Fontenot, Buzz. Yeah, Fontenot making his 12th appearance of the year. He's 1-0 and with a 2.79 ERA. Does have a save. And nine and two-thirds innings pitch, giving up seven hits, four runs, only three earned, six walks, and struck out 11. And he's got to shut down the door here with the tying run coming to the plate. A tying run does come to the plate. It's in the form of Cameron James, the third baseman cleanup hitter. Left the yard four times this year. Good for second on the Mississippi State roster. He does that now. We'll have a new ball game. Devin Fontenot's jobs to make sure that doesn't happen. As he comes set, as the runners lead from first and second with one out here in the eighth. Breaking ball missed, and it's 1-0. Never a question of stuff with Fontenot, just the command. Yeah, which is a bit of, surprise, a, bit of a surprise because his command has been good over the last couple of years. Just a little bit this year, the confidence has been shaken. And just need to get back. He just needs to keep going out there, and that confidence will come back. You're right, Hunt. The stuff is there. It's too good. Here's the 1-0. That's sprayed into right field. Cruz coming in hard. He's going to make the catch. The runners will retreat back to their bases, and that's the second out of the inning. Cruz got a good jump on that ball. Had to run a good bit towards the line in right field, but made the play on his feet. I thought for a second there that the ball was going to just sneak down, but with the good wheels of Cruz and the ball hanging up for ever so slightly, Cruz able to get there relatively uh -huh. easy. So two outs now in the bottom of the fifth. Runners at first and second, and Luke Hancock the sophomore backstop for Mississippi State will dig in. He leads the team with five home runs this season. Wind, breeze more like it, out towards right field today. Brody Dross rode that out for a two-run homer for LSU in the seventh. Imagine Hancock's got that on his mind right now as he digs in. Fontenot misses high with a 94-mile-an-hour heater, and it's 1-0. and Well, that's what's scary. You know, you pitched the whole whole game as well as LSU's done it and then you get to the latter part of the game eighth inning you got the tying run standing in the form of Hancock and he leads this team with home runs with the wing blowing out to right field got to bear down and make good pitches stay down in the zone if you're fought no Tigers will shift Hancock it's a fly ball to left field Dugas coming over towards the line He'll make the catch, and that will retire the side. Devin Fontenot comes in and puts out the fire. Mississippi State scores one, but they leave a pair at 6-3, to three, headed to the bottom of the eighth, right here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. To the action of LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. We play the bottom of the eighth here at the box. Gavin Dugas will lead things off for LSU. Kate Doty and Hayden Travinsky to follow. Facing Mississippi State right-hander. 
Parker Stinnett, who finished the inning back in the seventh. Yeah, Dugas with the big blow back in the sixth inning. Got LSU back ahead in this game. Towering homer into the left field landing out there. He stands in, takes the first pitch strike from Stinnett. It's 0 and 1. Yeah, that one a good 92 mile an hour heater down in the zone. I would imagine that's Garrett Edwards loosening up down in the Tiger bullpen. 0-1 pitch is outside to Duga. That evens the count at one. Yes, it is. What do you do there, huh? Do you send a Fontano back out, or is it Garrett Edwards that gets the ball? I think he's going to go to Edwards. I'd be perfectly fine with Fontano, but I think that Edwards has probably been dubbed the guy, and you got a chance to slam a three-run lead in the ninth. You do it. Duga but waves over the top of a breaking ball there, and it's one and two. That's, there's two thoughts there, too. You go to Fontano, and he's able to close the door. Breaking ball. Strike three, Duga waves and misses, and he's the first out of the inning. You know, if Fontenot's able to close the door, then great, right? I mean, you don't get to use Edwards, so that maybe you don't get him any experience, but if you send Edwards out there and he struggles a little bit, you never know what Fontenot would have done for you. If you send Fontenot back out and he struggles through the first batter or two, you got Edwards waiting, so it's a it's a fine line there that Coach Maneri has to, the, the call he has to make. It was the first pitch to Cade Doty's in there for a strike. It's 0-1. Things are heating up on the field, but whenever you're ready to cool it down, count on Slow Melt Ice. Colder, cleaner, and longer lasting. Since 1997, Slow Melt Ice has been a leader in providing package ice and bulk ice for commercial, industrial, and retail business in South Louisiana. Doty chops one foul, and it's 1-2. and two. Check out Slow Melt Ice at slowmeltice.com. Travinsky in the on-deck circle as Doty, who's 0 for 2 today, stands in. The 0-2, he held up, breaking ball down, and it's 1-2. and two. Yeah, nice job right there by Doty on a tough 0-2 pitch. The breaking pitch down in the zone caught a lot of the plate, just broke out of the zone, and takes a lot of discipline as a hitter with two strikes to not offer at that. Here comes the 1-2. Breaking ball down. He checked his swing. They appeal. He did not go, and it's two and two. Former hitting coach back in 2008, Cliff Godwin, used to tell us you got to see the ball up right there. See the ball up in the zone. When you see it at the knees and it's dying down, got to let that go. Two two. Pop foul. Out of play. And get a new baseball. Of course, Cliff Godwin, the head coach at East Carolina. They actually swept this weekend, Illinois State. But I remember that. It was his philosophy. Just he'd always say that. See the ball up in the zone. That's when you want to attack it. Here's the 2 2. That's fouled back out of play again. And they'll reload Newt Stinnett with a new baseball. And we'll do the 2 and 2 again. Six to three Tigers here in the bottom of the eighth. Mississippi State will have to tie it in the ninth or take the lead. Comes the 2 2 pitch. Checked his swing again. He did not go, and it's 3 and 2. Stinnett keeps peppering those breaking balls down, and Doty keeps laying off. And you're right, Doty had put together a great at bat in the six, ended up drawing a walk, and he's doing the same thing here. Got down in the count early and just putting together, getting to the next pitch. Fouling balls off and taking the tough pitches. Full count pitch. That missed high, and Doty's drawn another heck of a walk. Ninety-four mile an hour fastball up, and Doty was able to lay off. He'll try down to first base. Second time he's reached today, and Hayden Travinsky will dig in. Yeah, mirror images of uh, those at bats right there by Doty. Travinsky digs in. He's 0 for three, grounded out, and struck out a couple of times. Done a good job defensively behind the plate, though. First pitch, breaking ball missed down. It's 1-0. and oh. Drew Bianco's in the on-deck circle. He hit for the first time today if the inning continues. Garrett Edwards continues to get loose down there in the Tiger bullpen. Fontenot came in for Floyd in the eighth and got the last two outs, straining a couple of runners. The one out of Travinsky. That ball's hit high in the air to right field. 
Looking into the sun is Allen. He makes the catch for the second out. Doty will retreat to first base and two away for Drew Bianco now. Yeah, another major league pop up right there. Trubetsky hit that ball extremely hot when it got out of our view above the the roof here at Alex Box Stadium. I think we could have I could have ran to the refrigerator and got us a coke by the time that ball came down. They'll shift Bianco. Three infielders left to second base. Nobody at home on the right side. Here comes the first pitch. Gets away from the catcher Hancock and Doty will run down to second base. Yeah, gift there from Mississippi State. Tigers will take it with a runner now in scoring position. Bianco just 160 on the year, four for 25. Yeah, this is a nice opportunity for Bianco. Has kind of moved into a little bit of the backup role. He comes in late in games defensively in center field, as we saw today, and he's getting out and at bat and a meaningful one here. Here comes the 1-0 from Stinnett. Missed away, it's 2-0. Yeah, and these counts a lot. Sometimes it feels like Bianco maybe tries to do a little too much. I understand where he's coming from. When you get in those hitters' counts, you want to take a good rip at it, but he's big and strong enough. Just a nice short swing and let the pitcher provide the power. Here comes the 2-0. Mr. Way, it's 3 0. Three run lead. I might give Bianco the green light here. Figure you're going to get a heater? Yeah, well, you, if anybody's going to do it, Coach Paneri will. He's known to give the 3 0 swing, especially with guys in scoring position. You got a lead, so it's not like you're trailing and trying to come from behind and score runs. We shall see. Stanette comes set and fires. In there for a strike. Looked like Bianco had the green light there, but that was a good pitcher's pitch at 3-0. Yeah, you get the 3-0 swing. It better be the. I mean, you better be looking for the exact pitch in the exact spot, and that's the only pitch you swing at, and that wasn't it right there. So nice take by Bianco. Bianco checked into the game in center field, getting his first at bat of the day. Three and one as Doty leads from second. Missed away, and Bianco draws a walk. <laughs> Pair walks in the inning for LSU, so runners at first and second with two out. Jordan Thompson will grab a bat. <laughs> Tiger shortstop lined out back in the second and walked in the fifth. Dropped down a sack bunt in the seventh. 248 hitter with five homers on the year. Yeah, that home run last weekend against UT San Antonio was the game winner in extra innings. So he was the hero that night. A wild game on Saturday and even just as wild a game on Sunday. They shift Thompson as well. Three infielders left to second base. Huge lead for Bianco at first. First pitch is a strike to Thompson in the outside corner. But the first baseman playing 25 feet off the bag in the shift, Bianco's just as far off the base. He's a third of the way to second base already. Well, you get as far as the first baseman will allow you, and, and unless the right fielder is going to sneak in behind you, there's nobody that he, catcher Hancock can throw it to as long as you know where the first baseman is. Here comes the 0-1. Thompson laid off in the dirt. It's 1-1. One one. Even with the shift on, so that's working these Tigers away, away, away. Well, it just goes to show you that, again, they've got the spray charts. They believe that these right-handers, Thompson, Doty, a number of others, Travinsky, are, are dead pull hitters. So Here they're comes going to one 1-1. You're good. That's strike. Breaking ball split the plate and it's one and two. Well, what that tells you, hon, is they're gonna they're gonna make these hitters try to drive the ball. I mean, they're inviting them to drive the ball the opposite field, so they're gonna see if they can do it. And the data, you know, we talked about all the data and the information that everyone has these days. The data tells them that they don't do it on a consistent basis, so they're gonna play the percentages that Thompson's gonna hit to the pull side. 
One and two the count to the freshman shortstop. Stinnett kicks and fires. Missed away, and it's two and two. Call your Cranford on deck. Doty's got average speed at second base. Bianco runs pretty well over at first. Tigers trying to add to a 6-3 lead as we play in the bottom of the eighth. Two and two. Two on and two out. The pitch. Line drive. Right center field. Will it get down? It will get down and go all the way to the track. That's going to score one. They're going to send the second runner, Bianco, from first. He's going to score without a throw, and it's a two-out, two-run double from Jordan Thompson. The Tigers lead it 8-3. to three. Yeah, you know Thompson's fired up there, says, you play me pool, I'll just hit it right center. And I got to tell you, I thought Allen got a bad jump on the ball. I thought for a second there that it was going to be caught. It looks like he might have even lost it a little bit in the sky or the sun, but no problems there for LSU Tigers as they put another big two runs on the board and extend the lead to eight to three. Thompson didn't crush that ball, but he hit it in the right spot, and Allen got on his horse towards the gap in right center, but he just couldn't quite get there. All-out dive, as you'd expect, but it fell just out of his reach. Two-run score, a huge swing there for Thompson. That'll bring up Collier Cranford, Tigers' second baseman. The pitch. Missed high and away. It's 1-0. Stanette up to 26 pitches on the afternoon, and they got double barrel action down in the Mississippi State bullpen. Edwards has calmed down a little bit out there. We'll see if they still go to him. The lead swelled to five now. Cranford hits from the right side. Pitch from Stanette. Just missed away. It's 2-0. Oh. Approaching the 5 o'clock hour here. In Baton Rouge, Tigers trying to stave off the sweep here against Mississippi State, and they cling to a five-run lead here in the eighth inning. Here comes a 2-0 pitch to Cranford. Fouled back into the screen, and it is 2-1. Congrats to the Fighting Tiger basketball squad. Big win in the first round of the NCAA tournament yesterday. Play the Michigan Wolverines, the one seed, tomorrow in Indianapolis. 6-10 tip time, so Chris Brown and John Brady on the air at about 5-40 from up there in Indiana. you got to beat the one seed at some point. Why not beat them in the second round, I say. One went down earlier today. Loyola Chicago beat Illinois. The 2-1 pitch, Hanford fouled away over the LSU dugout. It's two and two. Well, LSU playing really well right now and the basketball Tigers, so it wouldn't shock the world, I don't think, if they pulled off the upset. No, Michigan lost three of five entering the tournament, obviously losing to Illinois, who's a one seed, and Michigan State, who's played good basketball of late, and then losing to Ohio State, who was a two seed. Not the worst thing in the world, but certainly a team that has played better this year and will be out without one of their better players. It's a 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball just missed. Counts full. If the Tigers advance to next week in NCAA tournament, I'll be headed to Knoxville, Tennessee for LSU and Tennessee baseball on Rocky Top next weekend. Full count to call your Cranford here. Thompson leads from second with two out. Called strike three, caught the outside corner, and that will retire the side. But the Tigers had a couple of runs on Jordan Thompson's two out, two run double. We go to the ninth. It's eight to three Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
Your Fighting Tigers play here. The home for Fighting Tiger Baseball. The LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers three outs away from staving off a sweep. It's 8-3 to three as we play the top of the ninth. Devin Fondo back out to work. He got LSU out of a little bit of trouble back in the eighth inning. Came in and got a couple of outs with a couple of men on base, and he'll be tasked with finishing the job here against Logan Tanner, Josh Hatcher, and Braylon Skinner, 6-7-8 in the Mississippi State batting order. Fondo will work from the windup against Tanner. Pumps a strike in there at 92 miles an hour, and off we go in the ninth. Big Texan, the 0-1 pitch, fly ball right field. Cruz takes a few steps towards the line, looks up into the Baton Rouge sunshine and makes the catch for out number one. As every Tuesday is Fat Tuesday at Walk-Ons, $5 Bloody Marys, Beignets, Boudin Balls, and Death Valleys on Tuesdays all day. Earn double points on online orders through Walk-Ons app and on Tuesdays too. With Labus on now, or excuse me, with Fontenot on now, Floyd, Give you his final lines, one and a third inning, gave up two hits, one run, one walk, and struck out four. Good stuff on the young freshman. He's going to be counted on in a lot of big spots for LSU this year, as is this guy, Devin Fontenot. He kicks and fires, popped up on the infield. Everybody converging on it. Who's going to make the call? Thompson, the shortstop, does, and he makes the catch for out number two, and LSU's one out away from putting this thing in the books. Well, and every time you feel like Floyd, I know he had a little bit of a tough inning there in the second inning once he gave up the hit and then walked a guy, but feel like every time he gets more and more outings, he just gets better and better and more comfortable. And we talked about that confidence. He's going to get more confident. And so the fastball's got life to it. He throws a lot of strikes. I love his delivery. The Tigers one out away as Fontenot peers in to Braylon Skinner. First pitch to Skinner. Grounded right back to Fontenot. He squeezes it. Slipped a little bit. Chunks over to first. Just in time to get Skinner to retire to side. And in the ball game, Tigers fight off a sweep and win the ball game against Mississippi State by the final score of 8-2-3. We'll be back with a lot more on the BMW Post Game Report. That's next on the LSU Sports Radio Network.